anybody has any comments or anything about the minutes from previous meetings? Seconded to approve the minutes of June 10th and 30th. Is that yes. Uh, Judy? Aye. Corey? Aye. Grant? Aye. Uh, motion carried. Uh, approval claims and payroll. limit signs. Mm -hmm. What's the status on those? We have them and they came from Barco. That's which why I have them. So there. we will get them up ASAP. Okay. They were here last month. Too. Mm -hmm. Which ones? Both of them? The stop speed limit signs. Yeah. This is the ones for third. Gas at the corner moment. Troy on his way back. Short, so we topped it off with 210, which seems like a lot of money, but it's not. Second to approve the plans and payroll. Judy? Aye. Corey? Aye. Grant? Aye. Motion carried. Uh, reports, police report. Bruce Houston. <coughs> Quiet. Well, somewhat, but they accepted the uh, Saturday, Sunday shooting fireworks pretty decently, so not too many complaints there. I imagine that it probably helped the sale of. Not really. Not really. No. No. Oh well. Yeah. Still, you still have to spend on it. They'll do it earlier. Yeah. They'll do it later. Yeah. We're about average. You still have to quit selling on the fourth, right? You right. Buy after the fourth. Right. Yep. Yeah. Which just really messed with my Saturday night. I know. Remember who voted for it? You blame yourself. No, I wanted to buy more. No. <laughs> <coughs> Radars been working? Yep. Been put to the test yet? Yes. Good deal. A couple times. The reason I ask about the speed limit sign on third is they're coming back around again. They're picking up speed is why I ask. Yeah. But I think it's... Well, we're going third, first, and ninth, right? On those? On the 30 unlicensed vehicle um, incidences, were any of them ticketed? No, not yet. Okay. No. So what do you, do you give them a warning and give them so many days? Just the notice to get rid first. Yep. Okay. Yep. So they haven't done it by when? The first? No, actually it'd be before the first. Okay. Because some of these went out uh, before the first of the month, some went out after the first. Okay. So. Some are already going. So. Any 
Anybody else have any questions for Bruce or comments or concerns? Congratulations to Tyler. Yep. Early Sunday morning. So now we'll see how his lifestyle changes. <laughs> I heard he bought a puppy too. Yeah. Yeah, the puppy came Smart. first. Yeah. But the puppy already came potty trained, so I told the kid don't. <laughs> Uh, if nothing else, Bruce, thank you. All right, thank you. And you can get back to the chicken feed. We're <laughs> Economic development report. Roger, I don't see, Roger's nope. not here, so. We talked about it in the meeting tonight. We figured that this would be a good month. And okay. Not much to do and seeing with the manor, I guess. The manor report is uh, fairly simple. Julie asked, and she's not here, but asked to put this in your packet. This was something that um, will help with her with her licensure and as well as her negotiations and compliance. This was a uh, policy emergency power uh, thing that was put in your packet discussing what will, what can be done, and where the city falls in to. Um, to the whole scheme of things. It really isn't much different. It's just trying to, she's trying to cover herself, and, and we, this is probably what we told her we would do. What's, it doesn't put us on any kind of a time frame. I mean, it kind of hangs us out there with the agenda and a bit of responsibility. What's it do on the, I mean, we're allowed to run it under emergency reasons, which this would fall under. It doesn't affect us anything else. Only concern I would have is um, the determination of an emergency is not always universal. So what may be deemed emergency here, uh, meeting power or the people we get power from, there, there's a little bit of difference. You can't just flip the switch because you feel like you can flip the switch. This might actually give us a little more power toward an uh, emergency. Yes, it would. Have you looked at this, Bruce? I just came through it. I had not heard any discussion what its purpose is, I mean, she thought she had to buy a generator. Now she doesn't have to buy a generator? No, last month she brought to the council, um, they were able to wiggle their way for a little while. This is only a, a, a this is a timing issue. I, I truly believe eventually, Bob, whether or not he want to or not, that she's going to be forced to go that direction, which then comes back to the city to get a new generator. They're allowing her to set this policy in place to let her continue as is if she can put this in. That's it. I thought I suggested something like that at that last meeting, and everybody said, "No, that's not possible. We've already checked." Or no, I think like she that. was. Uh, I think she said that she had already. Made, she made the comment that we were out because last month we I had taken some generator bids for her, but uh, as of that day of the meeting, I think that she had spoken to someone within that uh, licensing and uh, whatever and said that they were maybe able to extend the time. How much is our generator plant worth now? Several million dollars, isn't it? If you were to look at the... Uh, I, mean, I, mean, I just Johnson don't understand company. why we would want to go find another generator for a facility that's only basically, what, it, three blocks away, four blocks away, and we've got a $5 million power plant sitting here. Why that can't provide the energy for the, for, I don't know why I couldn't do it for the hospital, but apparently that was before my time. But it certainly ought to be able to do it for the manor. So anyway, you know, it's kind of a moot point at this time, but I, I just, I just don't agree with this idea of the manor having to go out and buy, spend a million dollars on it generator for themselves when they got a five million dollar plant three blocks away. It just doesn't make any sense. But of course this one thing this does say, say other than that we'll fire up, we'll try, we'll get in power if we can, is it says quite specifically, with the help of the city a portable generator will be brought to the facility. We got one of them? Yes. That they can use yes. dedicated? We've actually taken one up there we can dedicate it. It's a, it's Portable we have is for the lagoon, isn't it? 
Okay. We have another one, but it's a step above. It's not much more than a... So you have a couple portable? Yes. We have a step above a farm portable. You know, I mean, I'm not going to call it the greatest thing ever, but if they need to get 110 or something like that, we have that. Well, as long as you have at least two. Yeah. If they can't flush their toilets, even the manor might think it important to run the one on the... On the uh, Highway bike. I would certainly yeah. think that Kurt Hart and myself <coughs> and this council and you would uh, agree. Our station is a little bit more complex and unique. And you said you're taking a portable up in the port so they have yeah. the capability to plug. I mean, if that's the way it comes it, it, down, I mean. It is all a very temporary. It's, it's, it's like an oxygen machine. It's, it's like very, you cannot do a whole lot. So. They still have to put the disaster plan in place and move residents to the hospital. And I gave her our last uh, lead op, which is our emergency operation uh, manual, and she went through that to understand more about what the city's responsibility is in times of emergency and where she fits into the whole thing. So, so this is what she came up with, and I went through it, and I didn't see anything that was. Other yeah. than what we're doing already. Because I know you're specifically referenced in here with the phone number mm -hmm. here as your title, and then it mentions City of Plainview employees. So, I mean, I, as long as we can promise that they'll be available to do that in that's that, <laughs> an um, emergency. That's that five way, seven way, everything dials 4928, and knock on wood, it's been very good and it's worked very well. On call people are locatable very quickly. basically nothing to deal with on that for now. No, I don't think so, other than the fact that you know, she brought this back. And Probably a motion to authorize signature. Correct. I mean, you're taking on some responsibilities relative to the matter. I'm thinking, if you've looked it over, do you think it's ready, I guess, as an attorney, as a city attorney, well, to think sign it? anything the matter with it. We've well, got a generator we can do that with. I mean, basically, all she says in two pages is, we'll do the best we can, and the city will take good care of us, which is what we kind of asked them to say. Two months ago. Well, it's got his number, not mine. So. <laughs> well, where does like a liability with something like this fall? Where it, well, it's 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 from city's a, obligated to do what they're doing here, but you, you, my God, it's a city facility anyway. That's the key. So point. you it's, don't really have any issue there. You you couldn't take on these type of duties for a private facility. No. Good. Good question, though, but yeah, if it wouldn't be a city facility. This would be a different discussion, or not at all. I'll make a motion to authorize a signature for that agreement. I'll second it. All right, motion made and second to authorize signatures for that. Uh, Judy? Aye. Corey? Aye. Fred? Aye. Okay. Passed. Uh, discussion action on library bond to be put on November ballot. We have several things, and we'll let the Bruce and Bruce kind of uh, go at it. Uh, Bruce, if you would uh, introduce yourself. This is our emeritus representative. You have a, the, right the library board is behind you. Oh, okay. If you haven't seen that, then of course the okay. council is here. So. Okay, fair. Um, I guess for the record, Bruce Leffler, Emeritus of Estman Corp, Omaha. Um, I'm up here in, in John Tree Six Stead, uh, and I'm here for, I guess, uh, any questions that the uh, council or library board or the attorney or anybody might have as far as the uh, uh, call of the election and uh, the wording of the resolution and or ordinances that are uh, ordinances in place as far as uh, getting it set for a, a, a ballot, put, be put on the November ballot. Um, I guess I'll just jump on one thing that uh, Mike had mentioned to me in a phone call earlier today. Um, there seemed to be a, whether it's a typographical error in that first paragraph on that petition that had the 20 and the parens 20 that didn't have the years following it. We surely didn't see that and talked to, uh, briefly with bond council, didn't see that as being a fatal flaw in any stretch of the imagination on the, um, on the petition uh, from that standpoint. As long as, as long as you guys are fine with it, I, you know, we yeah. clearly have the language that says City's going to set the term of the bonds. Right. Okay. If you do this at all, you'll do that. There had been some other conversation, and I know people reading it will have concern over the, the statement about will levy tax. Maybe okay. you could explain certain aspects of that. The um, 
quite frankly, the logic or the, the, the wording behind that is that on a voted uh, bond, uh, bond election, um, the, the, vote, the vote by the public allows the city to pledge uh, its ad valorem taxing authority behind the bonds, which is actually the best security that the city can have for a outstanding bond issue, meaning that if necessary, you shall use, you can use tax funds. You, you may use tax funds in order to pay that debt service. It doesn't say that you have to, it doesn't say that you shall, but it ultimately allows the city to use whatever funds necessary or it chooses to use to pay the debt service on those bonds. But to the investor, what it means is the investor doesn't have to look at the sales tax collections that are coming in or any other fund collections that are coming in in order to see what is the security behind the bond that I'm investing in. I can look to the city's ad valorem taxing authority and know that should these other funds not be available that the city uh, would then levy a tax necessary to make sure as an investor I get paid. And from that standpoint, what it allows the city to do is probably borrow, the, borrow at an interest rate that's the lowest interest rate you'd have available to you. Is a revenue bond still an option this day or not really? Well, I mean, we do it, we do it quite often. You, you, you tend not to do it if you don't, if you have a choice to do it a different way. It doesn't mean, again, it doesn't mean you can't use revenue. So there are certain bond issues, whether it's uh, for utility bonds. Um, we do see it on some independent nursing home uh, type bonds where revenues are the only way to go. But when you have the option of having at least backstopped, if you want to call it that, by taxes, it certainly allows for a lower borrowing cost. What, what do you think the difference might be between a real straight revenue bond sales tax only and this? Um, and this is obviously out of thin air. But yeah, no, I understand. You're probably, in reality, you're probably looking at 20 basis points to a quarter percent, 25, 20, 20 to 25 basis points. So a quarter percent difference in interest rate. And, uh, you know, some of the language, I think, I, I don't think that the, the ballot language, I have, I have to defer to John for a little bit on this because of the statute. It's kind of an odd statute, I think, that's being used in this particular situation. Um, there certainly are situations where you could, within a bond election state, that we will use sales tax revenue, and then you got sales tax revenue bonds from that standpoint. Right. right. And that's, you know, that's already been made clear here to the library board, right. and the city, the council intends that. I think the point of the discussion from my standpoint is the library, in the course of explaining this, needs to make yeah. darn sure the voters know it's shall the city cause to be levied a tax. If you don't read the rest of it, the answer is yes or no. Nobody's going to like that very good. But it's shall the city cause to be leveled a tax in an amount sufficient to pay. Well, to the extent the sales tax pays it, which has already been dedicated, then there is no amount sufficient to pay. Yes, sir. The city doesn't need to levy any tax at all. And that point's going to have to be made rather loudly, or you'll have some voters up in arms that, no, we already passed one tax, we don't <laughs> want to pass another one. And if, if I can add, Bruce, too, that at our last meeting, it was August, we were going to set a script of how we were going to inform people about this Correct. bond issue so that we are all on the same page so we do not right. have, we hope, those, well, those you know, But they also have to be educated that if the sales tax falls short, there will be a tax. Correct, correct, yeah. Yeah, and that's the distinction from the city standpoint. Right. Right. You know, if the sales tax is successful and covered, we will let everybody's have its own. Yeah. And if I, if I kind of go backwards in, some of the documentation that, that I've had from John, uh, the, the city has certainly looked at that from the standpoint that they're not using the last sales tax dollar to help pay debt. There's obviously a cushion involved with that as well, from your standpoint. So the assurance from the city is the funds will be there to do that on self tax basis. We see, I would just say one thing, we see this quite often on, uh, on a lot of city-owned facilities where when you're voting, as long as you're going to the voters for the for the approval to do that, to take the you know to get the best security that you can, which is the backup essentially from the, from the property tax allows you for the lower interest rate, and uh, it does become an educational process for the for the people behind it to say, you know, the city has pledged the sales tax revenue. The sales tax revenues uh, historically are sufficient to make payment on those things, so we don't ever anticipate that we're going to tap that uh, that property tax. Just uh, FYI, if you look at your treasurer's report, one of the things the city long time ago took it upon themselves to make sure that things were able to pay the bill as you go along. We also have a certificate of deposit for bond reserve. It is there to pay off any lacking of any bond 
whether it be on the lagoon or whether it be on okay. any type of bond for the future. And it's uh, right now up to 76,000 and you know, it continues to grow. So that's not there as your nest egg, but that's there as you know, your possible cushion regardless. So your resolution to act on is the resolution to recognize this petition has been out there. Has there been any turn-in of the petition? Petitions here, the way it is, that I can read, Bruce, and you probably read the same thing a hundred times, but under state law, tonight we present the petition to the, the second class to the council, to you, and basically from the law itself, such petition shall set forth the nature of the work contemplated, the amounts of the bonds, and that's what's written on there uh, at the top and at the bottom. The rate of interest, length of time that the bonds will run, which in no event shall be less than five years, no more than 20 years from the date thereof. The petitioners shall give the bond to be approved by the city council of cities of the second class or board of trustees of villages for the payment of the expenses of the election in the event that the proposition fails to receive the majority of the votes cast at such election. And then it continues to go on. So, so you've got a couple blanks to fill in on, the, on this resolution. Not less than 50, I take it, is the, the threshold for the signatures. You could fill that in on the official resolution. And I was going to ask is you if that's a lot the, more than 50. There's 117. Why don't you say not less than 75 then? Mm -hmm. or yeah, okay. Okay. That's right. It's well going to defer to you anyway on that. I mean, as long as you're sure that many can be verified without question. And then there's a blank for taxable valuation of the city. That may require a phone call if you have not made that phone call to ask the assessor how much that is. And the Americans won't know. They, they didn't fill it in anyway. Is that a, is that a, you know, the, the valuation of the city uh, normally comes out from the county right. for uh, budget purposes in August? Is that well, I think I, what they're doing here is, um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I guess reading it to the extent it says the city as of January 1 of 14 is whatever the taxable valuation was at the time. So it's your 2013, yeah. 2013. 14, 14, 14 valuation. Just to prove the, the possible percentage against right. the possible valuation right. can do it. It'll right. do it 20 times over. Right. But right. You right. I hope it's worth more than 500,000. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the rest of the thing has the content of the 500,000, the yes or no, four set bonds and tax. You've got your work cut out for you as far as explaining that and the notice that comes out. So it's, it's all just one resolution. You just need to make a motion to pass a resolution. It's all in there. Any further questions? No concerns? Yeah, I think so. I'm just going to suggest that you follow this with Joey and 
Yeah. Okay. Sure. Still required once yeah. each week, not less than four before the election. Right. Okay. Talk to them about that. Right. All right. I want to make sure you get that set up. Four, you said? Uh, Joey. 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 Very smart. Yes, no, she knows her stuff. There's no doubt about that. Of course, she's been doing it for 38 years. Real years. <laughs> it's something that you kind of learn over experience. Well, is that uh, number five then? We've got that, what we need to do with that so far. Okay. I believe so. Library, board, anything you need? Now you know where we start. We'll have it in tomorrow to Shannon and Matt. She's expecting it, so it'll be on the November ballot. All right. Uh, update on street paving process. We have Mr. Mead here. In front of you, you will notice, I talked to Bruce today. The contract didn't go out. The contract's fairly thick. And Bruce, our attorney, has a contract, and I have one. But what I did, Terry, is give each one of the council the scope of agreement. Uh, I think you and I might have even talked about that at one time. But they have at least the agreement part to explain the street paving process in this uh, convoluted world, where do we go next, and hopefully you can guide us on the right path. Uh, well, like I like mentioned before, this is our standard agreement. I don't know how many of you have seen it before. Uh, I'm sure the city has dealt with it at some point um, with numerous past projects or whatever. But we, we'll focus on the, uh, the scope of services, which is usually part of the agreement. And that's really the kind of the meat and potatoes of what we're doing, I guess. Um, what we did is put together a, a proposed engineering agreement for uh, the five uh, paving districts that were created earlier in the year. Uh, Pilcher Avenue, 4th Street, 9th Street, and then there's two areas of West Street. Uh, this scope of services basically spells out the preliminary design phase, the final design phase, um, the bidding and negotiation phase, and construction phase. Construction administration. And then it goes through the resident project representative, which is basically the on site construction inspection. And then post construction phases, which will be the set, you know, putting together the assessable costs and uh, you know, attending the assessment hearing and that, that type of thing. Um, without going into specifics of each one of these, the preliminary design phase, everything from the preliminary design to preliminary design, final design, bidding and negotiation, construction administration, and then the post-construction is, is figured as a lump sum amount. Uh, and that's what we have now is $93,575. That would be the lump sum for those services. We separate out the RPR, which is the construction inspection, because some of that is somewhat dependent upon the contractor you have. And, how much time we spend out there and how much how much the city wants us out there. We normally do construction inspection on a part-time basis because normally for us to be out there full-time, it's it's not really cost-effective for the city to do that. So we generally do construction inspection on a part-time basis and bill that hourly. And so that's separated out and that's an estimated cost of 25,000. And then there's another, another portion of inspection that's called the slip inspection which is your stormwater pollution prevention plan inspection, and that's kind of, you're somewhat obligated by the state to do a stormwater pollution prevention plan. I, I won't go into detail on that unless you have questions, but that's also billed as an hourly. Basically, the construction inspection is billed hourly and everything else is lump sum. Um, I don't know if there are specific questions you have had. Have you any of you reviewed the scope of services at all, or? They, we just, Bruce and I just talked about this today. Okay. They just got the, uh, fee attachments to them, and then Bruce is probably the one that's looked over the most besides myself. Okay. Um, uh, the questions that come up, I know from helping the council in direction, is next step is the securing of any bids, or where would you go? Well, it, it, let's assume let's assume you approve this today. Um, that within a couple of weeks, we would start to survey. We'd go out and survey the project, the, the individual projects, and begin our preliminary design phase. We're a ways away from any uh, any bidding and bidding of projects because we don't have we don't have a set of plans we don't have a set of specs uh, we don't have any of that at this point so we would first thing we would do is go out and survey it 
Um, and that would take a couple weeks or whatever. Uh, and then we'd begin our preliminary design. Um, we put together a preliminary design based upon what we know the city needs in those particular areas. That would usually be reviewed by the city. Um, once we get to that, then we, we, we'd move on to final design, which of course would you know, be the final design. The preliminary design phase usually will take, for this, for, for this, I think we figured in 60 to 90 days, so it would take two to three months to do the preliminary design, another month to two months to do the final design, and then we'd be ready to, uh, we'd have to set a plan. Very clearly for. looking at building, if at all, next summer. Right. We're, we're not, we're not, we're not going to be building anything this year. We, we, we're simply too late in the year to be really doing anything Does like the that. council have a clear understanding of the cost of each of these prospective project projects? I mean, we have yeah. in the one and six year plan <coughs> some estimates on this stuff. I mean, uh, my only suggestion would be if you're going to hire the engineers to go ahead and spend a hundred and twenty some thousand dollars on the process then you better be pretty sure that you intend to proceed. <coughs> well, I think when we are, property right? owners show up and say, you can't do this to me, I'm not paying $15,000 for paving in front of my house, you people are jerks, and well, you have to repeal that. I guess that brings up the question of, so if we accept this, do we accept it as the total amount of the project? It's not, no, this, this. it's not broken down for a project, is kind of the problem from that well, standpoint. Previously, when you bid your paving districts, I think Steve Parr had originally done put together the number, the construction estimates for each one, and I have that here. I mean, I could probably give you a copy of it if you need it. But those opinions of cost will include engineering into them. So, like I believe the total for all five projects uh, was somewhere around one hundred and four thousand dollars. So that 121,000, or whatever it is, I can't remember. Yeah, 121,000 is in that 804, in theory. You know, the total, obviously we don't. The total was 804 right. for the five projects. Right. And that includes. The that that's of course is. We don't. We haven't bid any projects, so we don't know what the contractor is going to bid. But that's right. Rough. But that's I, a that's an estimate. I guess we're, what I'm wondering about is if we go through the preliminary design, and do all the design probably go through the bid negotiation but then should those prices come back and then we start catching flack from the homeowners well I can't answer that but you've already created the districts to some to some degree your residents have already accepted this. and they have yeah so obviously they can always come back and change their mind right and, that's, and they, they still have that option yeah we talked about understanding it. at the meeting when they kind of some of them sort of reluctantly yeah. accepted it. Yeah. It was the, the next idea step that if it comes in at a high bid that they don't they aren't comfortable with it, we'll probably throw the thing out. Right. And that's I guess that's that's a city decision. Um, by creating the paving districts, your residents have basically already approved it. So that well, would be a already, they've already lost their ability to stop it, let's say. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they've approved the same the but they, yeah, that's that's my question being yeah. is we approve the contract, it's for the lump sum of the hundred and twenty one. It's not. Well, if, if we were to stop altogether, we get a lot of the, the we're, we're, We bill as we progress. Okay. So if halfway through this process you decide you're not going to do it, we'll bill up to what we've done. Okay. I mean, I don't. We're not okay. going to stick you with the hundred twenty-five thousand. That's 000. why I wonder. We're not liable for. And no, we're not going to do that. Okay. I mean, we, we generally bill as we progress. We. Once we complete the preliminary design phase, that we build, it, we build monthly, but we generally build to what wherever we're at. Gotcha. You know, we're 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 the city's engineer. We've done numerous projects here. We're not gonna. If you stop halfway in, we're not gonna go. Well, if you remember, I I raised some serious question on the library contract with that. They added some language about you can terminate at any time and pay us up to that. And maybe that's the general intent. I didn't. I don't. I, I, I'm not going to say I know what exactly what the language is in our contract, but I, I know we, you know we're not going to. We, we do other work with the city. We're not going to force you to pay money and then lose future work. I mean that's not very smart of us. So. And I do know some of the conversation about future 
the residents coming back. And Bruce is here instead of John. But John and Terry and I you know, sat down and talked to the last time with, you know, uh, about the bonding of this. And, and this is where you're going to go in the assessment and how much. This is where a lot of your decisions are going to be made coming into it. As far as the paving districts, uh, Terry's right. I mean, they passed and you are, you know, good to go, not to be stopped, I think is the way Bruce said it. You know, but but yeah. what you do is certainly what Bruce was saying. If you're going to go forward, you can, I mean, you, you can go forward right now regardless and, and, and may cause a lot of, what the word consternation. Well, there are some people. areas you cannot assess. That study hasn't been completed totally yet. I mean, there'll be some places you just can't assess. But if you assess everything you can, take out the intersections, I mean, it's strictly a pick a number out of the sky right now, but probably the city is in for somewhere between $100,000 and $200,000 out of pocket if you assess everything you can, because the city has to stand on the intersection, right? And we can't assess agricultural property and whatever. I mean, there's some limits to spaces you can assess. So you got to be prepared to bite that off at least, and then either assess the rest or bite that off too. And 800,000 is quite a bit. Go to the library for that. And uh, to his point about being 800,000, you have five different paving districts. <clears throat> um, this proposal is for all five of them. Uh, we could go back and redo, right. you know. It, 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 the conglomerate would be more expensive that way, but. Yeah. <coughs> but you know, beyond that, those discussions, I mean, uh, you're just taking on a significant project here. They are going to do a lot of work. You're going to spend well, 40000 or 60000 getting these answers and getting to bid. Yeah, we'll have 60000 so If you're not pretty sure you're going to give it a hard go, you don't want to do that. That's the only point right now. <clears throat> I think we want to go ahead with it. I think we have to. I mean, that's why we're going yeah. to talk about it. We knew it was going to cost us some money. Yeah. I so mean, how do we sit financially? I mean, that's a question for you. We're, we, a long time ago, you know, you made this, and we are okay. But I'm just saying, a long time ago, you made this decision. I would say I would support, I would like to see you go forward because this is what you've instructed yeah. me to do for the last two years. Now we're at this point of uh, actually you know, where the rubber hits the road. And, and okay, so if we bond two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand of this amount to try to get the rest of it back. Well, you bond it all. I know, but assess the rest of it. The well, assessment's going to take care of. Yeah, if I can. Thirty percent of it. If what what typically will happen then, um, and again, John will go into more detail. I think for some interim financing ideas, certainly. Uh, but when you get to the permanent financing project, it's been completed. You get the sign off. Uh, you know, there's a 50 day pay in period for assessments. And so, typically, what you would do is wait for those assessments, payments to come in, you lower the bond issue by the amount of money that's coming in at that point in time. The people that don't pay their full assessment within that 50 years, or 50 days, excuse me, has 10 years typically to repay in installments. And so, you structure your bond issue in such a manner paying forward that, you know, those assessments will come in and pay that portion of the debt, and the city's portion will be, you know, if that's over 10 or 15 years, you certainly have that option. Well, so it's a coordinated effort on that. And then occasionally, too, you'll see a piece of property that, say, has a little chunky house on it, gets assessed for $50,000 paving, and the owners just don't pay. And then your alternative is foreclose the assessments on that property and sell it for the $15,000 it's worth and eat the rest. So that happens, too. Got there, there's some town we're already working on titles for, I think. So I don't think more than one. <laughs> okay. Wow. Well, Do you feel forward? All you're, feel for, or all you're moving, moving on forward? tonight is authorizing the signature of the engineering contracts to move it. I mean, everybody's watched the video probably. I mean, we were kind of over a barrel. We didn't have a choice. I mean, I ain't here to argue with nobody, but. What is it you're thinking, Jim? I mean, offhand. I mean, obviously you're looking at you're going to have to pay the increase. I just I'm trying to get your thought process for the guys. I mean, we obviously if, if there's some continuation, 
of anything. I mean, what, what do you pay over Jack at the same my business? Thirty-four dollars a ton. Thirty-four dollars a ton. And then thirty-four. When did that start? June one. We were paying what? Previous. What was our previous? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. How much? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. And you know, I got to tell you, Gil was always good to us. But if in hindsight, instead of incrementally going up, you've heard this old thing, old saying that if you don't go up on an incremental basis and keep going. This was a big hit at a big time. So, I mean, they, they went out. We haven't had an increase. Do you guys know if what your, uh, did you get raised or not? Do you know that? You're talking on our tonnage from the yeah. but we haven't seen a contract or anything. Well, Gil sent out a notice. You're paying them, aren't you? Right. Okay. You're paying them the 34. No, you're not. Okay, talk to Mike about that. I don't know what he's paying them. He went June 1st. Uh, Why well, would you say they're not? Went 26 bucks. I've done my homework. Mm -hmm. You didn't get raised. That's why I'm wondering why I'm getting raised. I, I don't, actually, I, Jim, I'm not arguing because you and I have always been able to get along, but I don't know where you're coming from on this one. Well, I'll just show you. I've talked to Leonard Gill myself. And I have your last bill from June at $26 a ton. Leonard, personally, give it to me. I got that same one, but he didn't raise it. He didn't raise it. Regardless of what he's done, not done, or anything else, I'm telling you this is what we received and this is what we're going off of. But you just told me you got raised, Mike. Right there. I'm showing you. I'm going to show you. Now, what Leonard and I... Oh, I just want to know why I'm being the beaten post here. I, I'm staying out of this one because, believe me, I have nothing to do with this one other than what I have to do. Do you know, Jim, if that's the case, we've dodged a bullet, not you. The city, you what? If that's the case, the city's dodged a bullet, not you. What I'm asking is Leonard, and by the looks of this, has not raised it. This is what I've received from Leonard specifically. Has he told you? He sent them out to everybody. What's he doing? I mean, what is in your mind when you talk to Leonard? What is his intention? He hasn't raised he hasn't raised rates on us for years. He won't that. raise rates either. <laughs> I mean, he hasn't done it. I, and that's what, he hasn't done it for years, and he can't go back far enough to when he raised the last time. I know. That's what he's sending out. If you want to say. I, I got that. Okay. That's what what does the bill show? Facts or what that? How'd that come? This one came to us in from Melissa. You probably received yeah, it. It came from Alpine. And you're, didn't you say earlier we were paying, you were paying 28 at the time? I was 26, and I apologize. That's probably said that on the 26 to 34. Mm -hmm. I thought you said you was paying 34. It is. It says right on there. It says in this notice that it's going to yeah. be 34. That's what it said. Effective June 1, and this is what we've been acting on. So did you say, Jim, did you get one of these notices also? But no, you did not. He never pays Gil. Can we see what you well, did? But Gil. obviously, you talked to. Ms. No, I never. I, I, Leonard Gill himself gave me these. This here. And those are just the that? invoices, basically, is what they are. Huh? Can we see that? Yeah. That one there, and that one there. Yeah. Right now, and he still is at 26. Okay, so 
he did say he was raising them. He sent that out to all his customers. He said. So he's not going so to raise. I guess I follow up. Yeah, we need to find out what his intentions are because if it's if it happens next month, we're going to be in the same boat. But what's the time period the bill is, that you just paid is for? June. So he still has not made his rates effective. Yeah, he has. We need to he, he told me he has not raised Plainview for how long? He can't remember when the last time he raised it. And I have to agree with that. That's what we've always been going. We go with that. My question to you, Jim, and like I said, I've talked to Randy too uh, several times. I haven't talked to him obviously in the last month. But what's his intentions? You know, I I don't know what his intentions is, but he told me he says he hasn't raised and he's, he don't plan on it. That's so, not, honestly, that's not Jim's responsibility. Yeah. No, but I, okay, I mean. We need, to, we need to talk to him ourselves, find out what his plans are, if this is going to go into effect ever. If it, it just happened to be he sent it to everybody, that notice to everybody in his role do that. I know, but the, look how professional it looks. It's on a piece of printer paper. I mean, don't letterhead, no nothing. No, just came in a bill. Yeah. So. I mean, I think we need to talk about well, and find out what I mean, if we are not going to get raised, I don't think we will, if we don't get raised, no. we aren't going to raise a tipping fee. Then what I would do then, probably from our standpoint, is I don't think we're out of the woods yet, but I think that we at least table it. We have to. Yeah. Well, I can see the writing on the wall. Uh, if we can't go the way we are, and we have a contract, I can see six months into the contract, the tipping fees go up, here we go again. If we can't run just the way we are, can't we? Oh, I think you're hearing from the council that that's what they're saying yeah. they feel they agree to. Yeah, I don't, I can't see raising, if we're not going to have our rates and stuff raised without us doing anything, I'm not going to raise yours or our customers, the citizens of town. I mean, that's the other side of what we were looking at was raising rates for, for pickup. But yes, if we get raised by it's, Gil, it's from 26 work. to 34, we're going to have to make that difference up. We don't have that money budgeted. We don't have that money available. So we're going to have to collect it from tipping fees and residential rates. We can't tell you but, so in the next 24 what months. What happens to me? Let's that's get that out on the table. Well, I think that's the question. I'm asking you what is it that you feel? I mean, uh, i got to go through the motion. I pick it up. Uh, if I get raised, for example, this was eight, or if the tipping fees go eight percent up, why am not I entitled to an eight percent raise? Does everyone understand why the hauler pays tipping fees? Let me explain that to you for a second, because I don't think I've ever heard it discussed while any of you have been sitting here. The simplest thing is the city, if they're going to run a transfer station just runs the transfer station and they pay the pickup people the flat rate for pickup and then they haul it all away. Why go through this foolishness? Perfect. The city can run that. And that was the plan years ago. And Besmer came in one time and said, I can't stand this because they're charging me tipping fees or rather uh, I can't separate my city, my country garbage from my city garbage. I don't want to separate my country garbage from my city garbage. So if I go out and make a loop out in the country and pick up the east side of Plainview and go dump, I'm dumping some country garbage. So the city said, we well, can't dump country garbage without paying a tipping fee. And Besmer said, well, I can't separate it. So we settled on a plan, the current plan, that says you get paid this much and for that you absorb the tipping fee and you pay it on everything. Since the, the dump truck folks don't want to make a separate drop to get rid of their commercial garbage. Because there's commercial garbage in town mm -hmm. that they don't flat rate and there's the country pickups that they don't flat rate. And if they don't want to separate that, the city can't just furnish free Call into Jackson for everything because it's not built in anywhere. That's where this kooky system came from, but it was to compensate for 
getting paid a flat rate always on the residential, and the commercial and country is on your own, charge whatever you want, but pay the tipping fee. So they do, they do get caught in the middle on this tipping fee business sometimes. And they can absorb it on the country pickups, they can raise their rates. They can absorb it on the commercial pickups, they can raise their rates. But the contract has always said, take your chances for the period of the contract on tipping fees on residential. Build, build it into your bid. Jim doesn't like that. that. That's what it's always said. And every time the question comes up on tipping fees, it cuts into profits if they get raised. So he doesn't like that, of course. But that's why the contract says what it says. And if it gets too far out of hand, well, of course, it would, be, it would make it into a losing proposition. But the protection that they've had always is it's a commercial rate. Plainview can't charge $80 a ton because everybody go somewhere else. And so you're protected by the market, but that's the only place you're protected. If you want to change the contract and say, it's cost plus, you know, the tipping fees are included or you always get a raise, then by God we better bid it that way. Because that's the way all the bidders have had to deal with it uh, in the past is you're bidding for a set term and you're taking your chances on the residential tonnage for tipping fees. Now you can Tell them you're going to raise it if you raise it anyway. Tonight you're just going to table it. You're not going to do anything, obviously, because we got fact problems, and I don't know the answer to the fact problems. You, you certainly have no reason to raise the residential rates or worry about the tipping fees if you haven't suffered a raise. So you need to find out what the facts are anyway. But that tells you why we are where we are. That's where all this stuff came from. Well, yeah, I, I agree. Think, I guess it's about as muddy for me. Yet. I, I don't understand why we can't just do a straight tonnage. But, you know, if anybody's dumping out here, what, can, what's wrong with But if that? you're going to furnish the tip fees what? for all the residential pickups, then you would expect the bid to be lower. Because they don't need to take in that much money. The tipping and hauling to Jackson is being furnished, right? Or it's not being furnished. They're paying for it. They didn't have to pay for that. If they got free dumping for all the residential, well, then the rate for residential could be much lower. Well, that's, I guess my thought is if we're paying, say, 34, 26, whatever it is now, for the tonnage at Gills, why can't we just charge X amount for the tonnage? You guys are weighing when you come out there anyway, right? Or no? mm -hmm. Well, but that's what they're doing, but you're charging a they're charge profit to cover the semi and the driver and everybody that's going to Jackson. If we didn't have that, they'd have to drive the garbage truck to Jackson. And you can, you know, it can be structured either way. I guess my thought, can, we, just, can we structure our, our tonnage accordingly and not so much, and maybe I'm looking at this tipping fee separately. I mean, so is, is tipping fee actually, it is, well, it is straight tonnage. That's just straight tonnage for the privilege that they have to get rid of the garbage a half mile from Plainview instead of driving it to Jackson. And Key pays the same and everybody that comes here pays the same, whoever comes here. And from here, the city gets that and has a little margin and hauls it all to Jackson. Do we know how many tons there are of the residential pickup? Yeah, we've got it all broken down. I do not have I mean, you could know how much down. extra a month you're talking about for residential tonnage. And that number is built into their gross right now, and then they're paying it back out in tipping fees. It's just money from one hand to the other. One hand is washing the other, yeah. and is all it's doing. Yeah. I, know, I know from looking at it and fully prepared for tonight, uh, obviously we don't see the increase, so it's a new issue. But on the other hand, if this increase goes in, I know the direct effect uh, on Jim, based upon the tonnage he had last year, is right around 6,000 a year. He gets hit with about 6,000. Remember, we were hit by going from 26 to 34. You mean it'd be a $6,000 raise? 
would be a six dollar. Um, he would have to pay six thousand more. From six thousand more on the tip for the residential garbage. Yeah, for everything he dumps out there. Where'd you come up with six thousand? For everything. I used uh, the figures you had, and then basically took it. What would it be at fifty-one versus now? You'd have to pay fifty-eight. So I've got the all the. For from a year period, year and a half, yeah. um, that did that. Okay, but that's not just residential. That's no, residential that's and commercial, and that goes to the problem. So that would that would generate six thousand dollars for the city that I would come out of my budget, right? That's yeah. yeah. I mean, it, maybe it, half of it you build as a commercial and country customers, but half of it you'd have to eat. I don't know what the it wouldn't be you no know, half. I have no idea. It's not. Do. I mean, I mean, we did the figure. I mean, Jim's the the, the country is, and this is quite a bit less. There's no doubt about that. Um, but remember, we're talking what the effect if Gill, if Leonard, who's always been good to his work, I have no doubt about that. Leonard's always been good to Plainview. But if he does go to 34, the effect on us, Jim, which you weren't here at the meeting, is about 40 grand. Yeah, I don't know. But I understand where the effect that it comes back on you. And I just the real numbers I came up with and said, well, okay, what is fair? And, and that's I better go How back come to the we council. Didn't just look at the bill when it came and recognize that it was not thirty-four. I don't see the bills. I yeah, yeah I never I didn't. Bruce, that's just you know, something they go through the billing and the claims. I don't see the bill from LP Gill that goes straight out. So and I wouldn't expect the transition from either Kelly or even Melissa to catch twenty six. Well I mean I think we raised the rate during the June 10th meeting, didn't we? And that was prior well, to the bill coming. Well, you gave me instructions <laughs> to bring the documents to raise the rate. We never tonight. actually raised it. Well, that was my first meeting, so I didn't it said in the meeting, out, It said in the minutes last month, made a motion to, to raise, but that doesn't do it. That really, that really just constituted instructions to me. We have a resolution. We have an ordinance sitting here tonight. If you table those, you still haven't raised the rates. Uh, we just talked about it. The bottom line is, Corey, the bottom line what I said with, with Grant is that well, the city I mean, I dodged the bullet. The city has dodged the bullet. Everyone else is on status quo. Jim's still paying 51. We're still paying 26. Everything's been going as normal. The time, well, I don't know, and I'll be calling Leonard tomorrow or having Tim call him to find out exactly if he, if he t is saying that it's never going to happen. Don't don't say I you know. I'm not, Jim. I'm not. Never is a big word. You heard that in December. Yeah. Right? I mean, these, uh, based upon what we had in front of us, budget-wise, we've had 51 for the last since I've been administrator. Okay, that's that's six years. We've been at 51. We based what we talked about in December on the existing contract that was expiring in December. So. I don't know what Leonard's doing, and this has totally put me into baffle because all I have to do is what's given to me as administrator that their rates are going up. I, I honestly look at it as another side of this is we're to protect Jim and to protect the city. We're both sitting here working without a contract yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I mean, we need to, it's clear to me we table this resolution yeah. for tonight, I think. Um, we'll probably have to make a motion and do that. I mean, but next. The next step is, I mean, once we get this all figured out, because I don't think anybody can sign a contract right now. And I think we need a different contract, different, uh, just, you know. Well, it's a simple matter for city to furnish pre-tip and hauling to Jackson if we want to redo the math, but then you got to separate the loads. No, I... And know. that's a big pain. That's what Besmer came in here for 15 years ago and said, I don't want to separate the loads. I want it all to be city pickup. Goes but see, up when I the, feel the like. tipping fee, if worst case scenario, if the country was picked up separately, I mean that that could be weighed separately, and it, it is weighed separately. Well, good. If you separate the loads, it's a piece of cake. Then the city can furnish the hauling for the city garbage, but that would change the rate and the gross a little. Do it either way, it doesn't matter. Does the city want to do their own garbage hauling? We talked about it, but right now we're not prepared for anything, Jim. I don't see it being a benefit for us at this point. I really don't. 
as he'd be more of a liability. Okay. I didn't know if there was a reason for this, if you wanted to take it on yourself. Or I didn't. I didn't know. No, the whole story was just the, it was the rage. Understanding that's all. Understanding from Leonard, and I still stand by my word. I mean, we sat here in that meeting. And, okay. I mean, I, I'm the only one. I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but I watched the video today just for that reason to see how that all went down. I watched it four or five times. Yeah. I watched a little of it, but yeah, it popcorn. But I had the contract, and that's so why I said I don't care what the video says. The contract is still the contract. But the, what the contract you have expired? But right? there isn't any. There what wasn't time? any reprinted contract. So I guess right now you're just flying blind. Table. We just running on what we said that night, and uh, I was I'm fine with it. I was fine with it uh, until this came up. Because I, I think what right. what Jim's probably saying is that if they do, if LP Gill raises the rates from twenty six to thirty four eight dollars, and we raise the tipping fee seven, he's going to have to raise his rate. Is what he's saying. And I think what Bruce is going to tell us is that if we negotiate a new rate, we're going to have to go out for bids and say who is that. I mean, I that's fair. Am I am I right there, he Bruce? Can, I don't think you're going to say. He can only absorb or pass on. The tip fees on commercial and farm. You're not going to see. He sets no. those rates, mm -hmm. but the tip fees on residential are mandatory. You got to dump city garbage at the city transfer station right now. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm sure you know he'd like to change that. And you could write a contract that says if there's a percentage change in the tip fee, uh, your total contract amount goes up by that amount. If you want to do that. Do that, but that'd have to be a rebid. Right now, you're just working oral agreement, roll over the old contract, stagger along. What's the rebid uh, process in that? Because as the status quo of 51, everything's fine as you're doing it. What are we looking at? 30 days? Well, you days? kind of promised him two years when this conversation happened. That's status quo. And that was a year and a half ago. <clears throat> or, I'm sorry, that was six months ago. Six a year and a half left. Really, just coasting. If Gill doesn't change, the question hasn't come up. Which keep our fingers crossed. But it's a new board, doesn't it? You want to just coast out the two years if you can? Fine. Hell yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with it. I mean, I mean, I. I mean, your only decision to well, make but it's tonight. Our two year, our two years is a. There's nothing even in writing to get on that. Well, you can put stuff back in the agenda for next month. All you can do tonight is either pass these or table them. No, we're table on. If, if in, say, six months down the road, halfway through your contract right now, they do raise it to 34, we choose to raise our tipping fee to whatever we were going to do it. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to exclude Jim or to make Jim's amount separate, different? Is that? Good. Well, if you're going to reoffer a new contract for the garbage, I guess I just argued in the past you should rebid it. You're not supposed to just write private contracts with whoever. You're supposed to bid them, but you're posting there now. But you could give if you if you see this come up and it's real, you could tell Jim, hey, in 90 days we're going to have to redo this. How about we rebid? I mean, he'd rather rebid than get. And have somebody tell him he's got to sit with a losing contract for a year, I suppose. Is that true, Jim? I'd just as soon leave it just the way it is. Yeah. I'm willing to work for, you know, like we talked before. If nobody got hurt out of the deal, what's, why, uh, if it ain't costing the city no more, why should it cost me more? Okay, but what if it does start costing us? Well, then whatever the percentage goes up, I should receive the same amount, correct? If it go like this one here went up eight percent, shouldn't I go get to go up eight percent? No, because what you're doing is not tipping. You're collecting. Well, the only problem with that, Jim, I think it's a fair concept, but the problem is when it was bid, that wasn't the terms everybody bid on. I mean, everybody was told 
you got to bid your pay for the term of the contract. And when that was done, it was five years. And it was five years, and it never went as up. It, as it happened, it never went up during yeah. that time, so we never had the fight. And I ain't here to fight, I'm just here to get the facts. Um, why, why, in your mind, if you was working, doing it, and the city raised you 8%, and you're set at a salary of X they, amount of dollars. They pay me a fixed amount every month and dump and, more crap on me every day. And yes. I, just, I don't see any different than that. No, to, to be more serious, if I had bid a deal for five years and I said I'll do it for that, no matter what, I don't care how much work there is, and by God, that's what I do. And that's what the contract said. But that contract expired. I told everybody the contract could only roll over on the same terms. Everybody voted and said, let's roll it over. But we don't have a paper one. So you're just floating. I guess I think you just float. But sometime in the next year and a half, it's going to have this to is going to come to a question. Yeah. Either Gill is going to go up or this is going to run out. Maybe a new contract should say you get this percentage raised to cover the hip fee. You could say that. Or eliminate them. Or eliminate them if you could figure out some way to absorb it. But the, the, the business of the outside plane view. What do you trash, mean absorb them? For the city to absorb the residential hauling. I mean, the city could absorb the residential hauling, but the city can't absorb the commercial hauling, and they can't absorb the farms, and they can't absorb key. I mean, anybody that's bringing in separate trash that's not plain view build has got to pay somehow to get the stuff to Jackson. Yeah, I can see with them other guys, but when it's your trash. True. If it's plain One view, hand is washing If it's Plainview's trash, Plainview can handle it. Plainview has never set rates for commercial. Plainview has never collected the commercial. That's been left to them. And if they, and if, and if the haulers feel like they got to raise their commercial seven percent because the tip fee went up, they can do that. The only place we got the problem is the fixed pay for the residential against the tip fee. And you could put that in the contract, that that goes up. But everybody that bid should get to know that. That's the problem. You never know when the tipping fees are going to go up. That's true. And that's what's crazy about the tipping fees. It only benefits the city. Probably in the future, you should Bid well, it next time you should bid it with that raise in to, there because this discussion to, needs to quit happening. Do we have to do a five-year contract? Or can, be on a, do. can be on a two-year contract. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, as as tonnage costs and you know fees go up and down, it's probably not going to fluctuate that much over a two or three-year period, but over five years. One of the arguments though on that was, including if you remember Jim, the um, individual who was just starting up a business mm -hmm. that put a bid in, is that. They wanted a five-year security. <laughs> that was buy equipment because of the equipment. stuff. You don't have to. You can do it if you want. But that was the reason that they went. Yeah, to and that, the it stands to reason. I mean, yeah, they're investing some money. In yeah. Something. Well, at this point, I think probably make a motion to table this. We'll discuss it until next month until we get some hard evidence. Second. Second. Uh, yeah, motion made second to continue. This or table it. Uh, Judy? Aye. Corey? Aye. Grant? Aye. Okay. We'll be back again next month. <laughs> I, hope we don't, I hope we don't see him for a year and a half. <laughs> hey, Jim, will you do me a favor? Are you over in S Sioux City right now? No. Can you give me a call tomorrow on a, a different issue? Oh, what's that? Can you call and give me a call on a different issue tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, we definitely need to know what Gill is actually going to do. Well, it's my guess is he's sending it out. Honestly, it's going. To, he's got something planned. It's just it's a full their, their billing software hasn't been updated. <laughs> we ran. If anybody's curious, we ran three-year contracts back in the 90s, and 
and up to January of 2003. And then, I think that's when Jim took over. And that was the, what I remember. There was discussion. I remember the discussion about the long term. We had a clause in there at one point. If there was any change in tonnage for over 20 percent, it would all be renegotiated. And we could say if there's any change in tip fees of over a certain amount, it could all be renegotiated. But as you heard him say three or four times, he thinks if there's any change in tip fees, you should guarantee him his profit and just absorb it. Yeah, we last did it in 2003 and then 2009. That's the last copy I have, because then the city started typing them up. I haven't seen one since. Mm -hmm. Kelly will type. Who's carrying garbage or picking up garbage years past? What? Who was picking garbage up in the 90s? Besmer, 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 Besmer. Okay, so And then Besmer said he was going to quit. And then it was bid a couple times. And then Besmer came back in and said, nah, maybe I don't want to quit. Jim will bid it. And Jim bid it. It's about the time that Bedmer wanted to start drawing Social Security, I think. Oh. Something like that. <laughs> but that's a separate question. <clears throat> well, number 11, approval of Judith Green as manager of American Legion, number 148. Mm -hmm. Anybody have an idea what that is? You, um, uh, it is, it's, it's a one, but... New Jim. What's that? May 11 is not that one, but... That's okay. <laughs> I never grabbed one off the chair. I should have. Sorry. That's, that's okay. You get off the button up. In there. And I guess just for yeah, formality, I just want to make sure it's clear. And I'll talk to Joe separately. Joe got some idea about 48 hours state statute and uh, our code both simultaneously. It's 24 hours, so if there's any question about adding it on Monday or stuff like that, it's perfectly fine. I don't know where the 48 hours come from. But school uses 48. Probably. That may be where you heard it. Some school district or some... Our school district uses 48. Yeah. And a school district may have to. <clears throat> so we need to approve somebody as manager of American Legion? Yep. Why? That? You have to approve a liquor license. Yeah. So we're approving the liquor license. We're not approving. No, well, they've approve. hired a manager, and we're, we're saying. I, well, the request is approved manager. I've hardly looked at it at all. But I think the city has to agree that that person can manage the liquor license. Right. The state has to receive a copy saying that you guys have approved for her to be the manager before they will issue the license. Do we have to do any background check to approve that? There's. Quite a bit of information here in the packet about the individual. You can investigate whatever you want. You get the same disclosure that they turn into the liquor commission. It's all in that little packet. Okay. I make a motion that we approve Judith Green to be the holder of the liquor license for the American Legion. The manager of the whatever. <laughs> That's a question, I guess, before we go too far on that. <laughs> okay. So, so this is received by the Nebraska Liquor Control Commission, so they've done their due diligence right. on this. They get it. Right. They ask the city's opinion, essentially. The Liquor Commission will still do as they please, but they ask the city to say we agree or we don't agree. I'm not so sure the city actually has veto power, but the city gets to offer your opinion. You approve this or you don't <coughs> approve that. That's I, that is under as I as, as I understand the procedure. I, I, I always I don't do. know this person. Does anybody know who I do. Only by letters. <laughs> I, I <laughs> she's she's, she's written some letters, letters to the lady. Okay, I've, I, I've known her personally for eight months. She used to go to she was going to come to our church for a while and I, I her granddaughter came to our youth program. Um, she worked uh, I don't know what it shows on her employment stuff. I mean just what I know is she worked in a factory for 
a number of years and then moved up here to retire. Okay. Just, Very patriotic, politically movable politically. person. <laughs> uh, and she's volunteering at the, I know she's volunteering at the. Uh, anybody know anybody who responds to those letters? She, <laughs> she seldom agrees with Ken Wilson. The application's so not for Wilson, it's not as long as Wilson's in the I'll second that one. She's a, I, she's, so to my understanding, she's a very reasonable, nice person that has a lot of responsibility. She's a very responsible person. She was her. Would have been she, nice to have somebody from the Legion here. She drives a nice yeah. truck and oh, takes care of her all the time. Give it to him. Yeah. <laughs> I'll second the motion to approve it. All right, motion made. And seconded. To approve Judith Green as manager of the American Legion. I don't know if that's really worded right. Say we're approving it. But uh, anyway, that's what's up. Judy? Aye. Uh, Corey? Aye. Grant? Aye. Um, Keno application is next. We should have in the packet and hopefully represent us here. Somebody from the school? I use. Patty says she is a vacation lady from Upper and we're going to be more so. Are you a social person? Am I a social? Social center person? Yes, I am. Ah. Well, there's three of them. they got to call for them one at a time or do whatever you're going to do. Do you want to speak about Larry? Do you want to come on up? Yeah. <laughs> we won't hold it against you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What we're looking for in the in the grant is that we're going to replace the uh, as the entrance comes into the social center, it's got rocks and and several and some shrubs, and we want to replace that with cement because it, we just can't control the weeds and it seems to keep working up and to make it look a little better for the public and town and stuff. We thought we would get that replaced and and. Uh, have a nicer looking uh, entryway to the uh, center. And we got two bids, I don't know if you got, uh, one was 2400 and something, the other was 1700 and we're taking the $1,700 one and we're, would like, a, you know, we're looking for a thousand dollar grant. Well, I apologize, on the agenda it says 1740, that should be a thousand. Are you going to, is it going to be a flat area there, underneath there? Where yeah, yeah, it'll be all, it'll, it'll be, be fat, flat, flat, yep, because it's curved now around it, but it just was covered with rock way back, who knows when, and they had them shrubs and things put in there, and the shrubs have pretty well outlived their life and uh, it's getting to look kind of ragged and that's why we want to kind of straighten it up so it looks kind of nice. I'll make the motion and approve the thousand dollars for the social center. Any second? I'll second that. Yeah. Right, motion made and seconded to approve the thousand dollar Aquino grant to the social center. Uh, Judy? Aye. Corey? Aye. Grant? Aye. Thank All you right. very much. Yeah, Appreciate you it. Remember, I told you not to. I don't know what happened. <laughs> they don't listen to me. Now the school. Public school. There's nobody here for the school. I, yeah, I don't know. Patty was supposed to be here. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I guess there was an application in the packet. Did anybody read it? I, guess, I don't. Figured out if they're replacing the basketball or the football scoreboard. All three of them. The football field, too? Yes. Uh, yeah. It's both? All, th all three. Both of the ones in the basketball court, in the gym, and then the one at the football field. Also. Well, I know, but I. So the two in the pirate gym. Basketball, yes. that one in the tarp. They're going to move the into the tarp. Yeah, move the pirate gym ones into the tarp. Yeah, I think so. With the new it's about community yes. betterment. And because they used the gyms and everything, I couldn't quite understand where the football field came in. Yeah. It's on the... It's on the quotes from Dactronics. Yeah. But it's not in any of the applications. Yeah. 
that's not necessary. She's only applying for part of, I mean, the total is 25. Yeah. The only reason I know is I heard this discussion five times at the school meetings. The total is 25 for all the scoreboards and the backlit and everything else. She's just asking you to approve the backlit part. Of the backboards, actually, isn't that? Yeah, of the backboards. So, like, when the clock runs out, they light up or something? I think or? when you make a shot, it might light up. Every time? Too. I don't know. Like a hockey game or something. <laughs> <laughs> they have, like, the lights. They have, like, the follow the basketball. First, last couple of years, it's been pretty miraculous when we do score a basket. So. <laughs> Just Just kidding. Kidding. Our scoreboard only goes to nine. Uh, yeah, exactly. One digit. Patty came in and we, we discussed this a little bit. Um, I, you know, this Keno grant from the beginning, I, mean, I remember the inception and everything when it came. A little difficulty with this. I understand from a viewpoint of the community club basketball tournament and some of the other youth activities and some of the things that are aside from the school, and they do use um, these. Uh, but this is a another taxing entity. This is. It is. I I looked at that because I thought it might be raised, and well, the, the statute says community betterment. It also says payment of bills essentially that would reduce tax burden on the community. Correct. Well, I guess you could say that fits. One government entity to give grants to another government entity is kind of strange. But I think it fits the definition well enough if you want to do it. I said, never mind. If you, if you go back and look through the amount of approved grants, I think the majority of the money has gone to government programs. Well, city. <laughs> but not yeah, other it's government. all the same. And I can't, I really, that's the part I don't disagree. I mean, I, I really like to see these youth, and it is for youth, and it's very clearly set out, and you support whatever you want. Did have some issues with them. Uh, school board come in about um, the, why should we do this when a merger is coming about? But uh, yeah. with that being said, in all fairness, they did approve a new floor yes, on Monday did. night, so the Tartan Gym is getting a new flooring system. You know, you know, actually, I would have much rather seen them come after money for that floor because <laughs> yeah. it's used for community purposes. It's used for lots of community purposes. The way I look at it is it's $25,000 we won't have to spend it. Well, there's a $49,000 floor and it's a $2,000 scoreboard request, so you might want to take this one. Oh, <laughs> and it'll free up $2,000 worth of cash they could use to pay the consultant for the merge. Well, right. I mean, they come to <coughs> four months, they put them in a van and they take them up. And you looked at me? <laughs> and of all fairness, too, it's already been paid for. I mean, the, the school has agreed to just pay yeah, for it. I see that. So <laughs> that they've already approved it. They only money. have a six million dollar budget. I don't know where they came up with twenty four thousand to do this project. You, on the other, the, the other side of it, you certainly have twenty two thousand in your Kino account to use as you see fit. And if this is a project worthwhile, then I think then you should go for it. How many teachers none of them showed up? I believe the community club coughed up some money, if that makes a difference. I was going to ask, but I didn't know if it was uh, material or not. They met last night. How about ball backers? How about ball backers to what? Do they put money into this kind of thing? They don't have any money. Baseball and softball. Yeah, they ask you for money all the time, but they, don't ever, they never have any. In all fairness, ball backers, they bought their own scoreboards. Mm, technically. Technically. By asking for money. With help of Kino. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many lines, it's hard to keep them all straight. Can we go on to the next one? <laughs> has, has the school looked into, I don't know right now, there's no scoreboard sponsorships. That they discussed. Um, they they actually the had. They, they actually had a private donor <laughs> ask to. The they were going to give half the money over to three years or something like that, and they wanted advertising rights forever. And I threw a little bit of a stink about that. If they're going to sell advertising on it, they should open it up, but then you got to manage it, and you got to change out the signs when you change them. And I, I made the case there, too. You know, you have a $6 million budget, and you can't find 25000 and just buy a scoreboard. That's kind of a maintenance upkeep thing, and they just did that. And so they kind of turned down the sponsor at the moment. So I think Pepsi gets on there because they're going to use some Pepsi money to buy it. To get Pepsi money from the from having a Pepsi machine or something like that. So. I think if they had a Bud Light machine, <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be a problem. Mm. 
Corey, one thing you can do is to mention what the previous said. Uh, these motions aren't set with a set number. You can offer any number that you wish up to or more if you haven't had to do that. have done that a couple of times. So let's get more. Well, you said there's only 22, so we can't do the full one. No, you can. <laughs> oh, you no, no, not on the scoreboard. Can I get in before you make that motion? You make a motion. <laughs> If you have any questions, I can do the best I can. We've spent $5,000 for doing the uh, weekend for Clown Days, and um, we spent $4,000. We're asking for a $1,000 Kino grant to help pay up the bills. So we've more than matched what we're asking for. Now, precedence for this one, I'll just kind of update you a little bit. Uh, certainly everything about it's reasonable. The only thing that is contrary to a typical Kino grant, but yet they, they've done it before, so it's okay. I mean, they did it with a barbecue and a couple of other things. But you normally don't approve Kino grants to pay bills for an event that's already happened. So that's just a normal course. But we did for the barbecue, I think. And I'm, I'm not really sure, Mike, on this because Diane would know this more. I go around and go out and do my thing. Diane, Diane does this part. Um, what we actually need to do is get in earlier in the year so that we have it. Yeah. So how does you the thousand know, dollars mean, get covered? Is there still bills unpaid? I think it carries over to the check. Account. Yeah. This, this isn't covered. This, yeah, I think they've covered everything. I have. I know Amy and the chamber basically controls the checkbook. Yeah, Amy and, and Renee, I think pretty yeah. much. And I think I'm. Not a hundred percent sure I stay out of it, to be honest with you. But I think I, I'm pretty sure they've covered it, and basically this is just to replenish the checking account for next year's expenditures for next year's festival. And that's perfectly normal. Why would do you? I, if we're going to do this, then after that, for the after to pay bills that they've already spent money for, I would like to see accounting. Why do they need it if they've already agreed? You know? and, and typically we have to go back. I, I will, if you would like mm -hmm. that. They cannot receive a keynote grant unless there is an accountant that has to come back to the city. So what happened why you couldn't cover what you were setting out to do? I, I Likewise, if they want to apply now for $1,000 for next year, I would have no problem with that. And I think that's what, you call that's what, what we're calling. doing. Wow. Well, that's not uh, what they've applied the wording in it is. It's basically talking about the expenses from this year and everything. But I think <clears throat> I think it's actually just after because I asked Amy about it because, like I said, it's the chamber controls the chamber. And I think it was more of the fact that it's worded of what this year consisted of. But I think it's actually goes toward that expenditure next year. Could they re-enter? I would one? say so. It make more yeah. sense. I would. I would love to have them. And then ask for five. Okay, just for my for yeah. twenty fifteen. Okay, just for my, when does, when's the soonest you can apply? When would you, I mean, basically, this is the soonest you just applied for next year. Uh, but since it's written like this, I would say you've got the December quarter, January 1, or January. So December, seconds. January, we could December, build. end of December, and the end of March. Okay. And, you know, I mean, maybe even. You can put it at any time. I'd rather see it once this checking. Well, you said I guess you got to be in September too. Yeah. Sorry, you got to be in September yeah. and then a quarter. In a September or September, December. December, March, and then the, of course this one was the end of June. Okay. So September, December, or March. Okay. So if I happen to be wrong, that if you would put it, if you would put it in now, 
tomorrow mm -hmm. for 2015, he would just hold it until the September thing. You can do it any time between now okay. and the end of okay. right? I, it, it's already in. If you would re-enter it, it just it automatically goes to the next yeah. cycle. So just fill out the paperwork again then and give it to you and then it can go in in September, December? But I, I guess I would just, I think Grant's going to say the same thing. To be clear, if this is for next year, I guess my preference would be that as close to the festival as you can so that the money stays in the city's checking account for a long well, time. Well, we, but and I guess March, you know. March might be cutting it close. Yeah, March might be cutting it close. Yeah, you start setting up entertainment and some of that little stuff ahead mm -hmm. of time, I think. I don't think September. I, I wouldn't want to do any more, any later December. This probably isn't, I mean, we're probably splitting hairs. But yes. This probably isn't the worst thing to approve now for next year with the condition you might want to just ask her that not come back in September. I would like to see a new one. You would like to see Yeah, it? I would. I would. Follow over. Okay. I understand. That gets filed that way. It That's like why I would have been on here, so I know. I mean, I have no problem doing it for yeah, and that's, <laughs> it's just a And they, they can show what they did this year and how much. Really what they did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, but and I understand that too. And like I said, I don't deal with this part of it, but Diane wasn't able to come here. So that's why I'm here. I'm the warm body that showed up. So, Okay, I will pass that on to them and then we'll just maybe shoot for probably the December one, I'm guessing. So, okay, thank you for your time. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Yeah. I haven't been up there for a while. How's the ball field improvements coming? I saw poles up there at one point. Incredible. I mean, right now it's moving along. Unfortunately, the season's over. But I think yeah. we knew that when we finally got approved that the crossbars are on and you know, put up the. I suppose the lights would probably have to be the next thing. They go up on a unit and kind of go into it. But they've got the new poles. They took down the old overhead wire. I think as of today, I think they're taking down the overhead wire. There's and one the more men's poles. game this Friday, so if they can be up by Friday, that'd be great. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. We'll put Miner's hats on all you the flashlights. I didn't hear that. What did you say again? <laughs> can you move to the other field if possible? I don't know if it's going to be like that now. Yeah, no, I don't think that'll be a problem. Okay. Is it the practice to leave the lights on at the concession stand? Those are not Those security are lights. Soft, what you're seeing is one of the requests by the ball backers was to the, the security would be so dark that they were having lots of break ins. And uh, there's no way to really light that effectively without a, some kind of a security light. So we opted to go with those uh, underneath all the way around. It actually lights up very well. But yes, that is what they're there for, Bob. Yeah, I was going to say, it's lights up there every, every morning. So. If, you, if you go down there at 11 o'clock at night, Jerry will meet you down there. Oh, really? He's teaching you right down there. <laughs> Found that out. Apparently he's not up at 6 in the morning. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> council comments. That's it. City attorney comments. Mike, you called this afternoon and asked about the Sims property. Yeah. And said we'd gotten in a bid. I told those people that they... And they finally called back and said they were serious that they were out of time to get into this meeting. That's what I mean. I mean, they needed to know that. We have people interested in the vacant lot north of the Catholic Cemetery, if you will. Second story. Corner lot. Oh, sure. And that's one of these with the mortgage on that we still need to clean up. But these people just want it for a secondary lot. They, they're talking about buying the house next door. And if they want it for a secondary lot, they could just buy it. I mean, if somebody's going to put a $150,000 house on the lots, then you didn't really want to deal with this fake old mortgage that's really no good, and you want it off of there. But if they're just going to use it for a garden or something, uh, we can talk to them. So they've turned in a bid. Now, I explained this to them. And they've turned in a bid to buy it and take their chances and take a quick claim deed. 
I told them to hold off. I got a call out to the title insurance people at Pierce that maybe it's so old and so obviously no good, they would just insure over it. They would just give them clean title insurance anyway. They could, uh, but I don't have that answer back. But I think that should remain pending. It's not valid for this meeting, but it's valid for the next meeting, or if you have a special meeting, it could go on the agenda. And you could look at their bid, and if you're willing to deal with it, accept it. And therefore, if, if we don't have to fuss with the quiet title action, and we don't have to fuss with all this other stuff, you can take less and still come out. And that'd be good. Well, um, just a quick little background on it, and Judy, you probably know who it is. If you don't, uh, it was a key kefer from here, actually, uh, Glenn's sister, I don't know, I can't think of her name, but they were in Kilburn, and they had their house destroyed. And they, she wants, they want to move back here to closer to her home, and uh, that's, they've been looking around. So I think in their search, they've come up with that uh, Pedak house. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I don't know. But they're interested in the house just east They're interested the in moving back, give them the once Seriously, again, well, <laughs> I frankly suggested to Who them, cares? I talked to both the wife and the husband, and I said, bid, but don't bid a lot. You know, if you're going to come and buy a house, I bet you can get this done. And I don't know what their bid is, but we'll see. I, now's our chance. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Run them off. Yeah. Right. Right. We right. on it every year. Another real estate deal, the Montgomery easement is done and pending and on its way to Pierce. So. I noticed like, in the list of expenses, there's a reimbursement or payment for some expense you had during the month, went to a seminar or something. Summer in CMA conference. Look at the tail end of the city administrator ordinance 1208. It very clearly says if you expect to be reimbursed, you should get those approved by the council in advance. Okay. At some point, somebody might come complaining and say none of those reimbursements were valid and you should um, the highway sign issue, the flashing light, that thing is still pending. I mean, I suggested there's this letter. You guys better pay attention and do something. Your letter, Mike, said you, somebody talked to the Nebraska Department of Revenue. I yeah. sure didn't talk to the guy that wrote the letter because he is retired. I can tell. The guy that is gone was replaced by this new guy, Alan, that after you said somebody told Yostin or yourself there was no problem, a week later, here comes a letter from Alan, who replaced Ryan, and he says, you people better get this done or you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And just because the fellow that wrote the letter a year ago didn't follow up because he retired. So he's still thinking about it, I take it. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, I'm waiting for a response. I, I wrote back, but I think I copied I mean, the, the The story that came out from the report back and said to talk to Yostin and get a name, who, who did he talk to? Somebody that drives a scraper out here or east of town? <laughs> I mean, he, the highway road people, the people in charge of this, don't know about any of that. So I don't know where the message came from, that this is all foolishness and we don't have to do anything, because it's still out there. It just happened by coincidence that this guy that picked up the ball wrote two weeks later. Do you know who was talked to? No. Did somebody call Norfolk or somebody that you know, doesn't to call know someone anything? The Department of Roads. I mean, it was struck me strange when you wrote your memo that there was no mention of who was talked to and why and what. But it's not so. I mean, that letter is still out there and it needs attention. And it was clear from the letter in Bruce's right that it's, uh, it's an issue. It's uh, unfortunate we can't do something with a flashing light to keep it flashing, but a school, it's, it's got separate hours. They are specific hours. And, and note in his letter this, that he reaffirmed with his backup letter, there's a second thing that says there should be a change in the speed limit out on the west side of town. Yeah. Did, I don't have the record. I don't know if that got done or not. That was a whole year ago. I hate to look back through my files. So you could easily enough check the ordinances and see if that speed limit was changed. I don't know if that's the 45. Um, they wanted, 
the 35 limit extended another 100 feet. They had looked in the Plainview City Code and said, what we've got on record has an ending at Pilcher, and it's supposed to be 100 feet beyond Pilcher. Yeah. Like that makes a huge difference, but they want it right anyway. <coughs> so we need to look at those two things and get something going on them. You have, and Mike has in his report, the air quality issue and the grumpy letters and citations from the state about reporting and stuff over here at the generating plant. It all has to do with the generating plant, right? This is all air permits air. and reporting. It's not DEQ sewer or anything. It's all over here. Bob Baird got thrown into the last grumpy um, phone call. But it wasn't about this. It was about air emission fee. And the fee, uh, they sort of raised their dander up about that they're going to put penalties on it. It was supposed to be due on July 1st. It went out in the claims. Well, you know, I never looked at it. We could have cut a special check when we just put it on the claims. So they decided to call Bob, and then um, uh, I went and researched it. And yes, you approved it tonight, and I called him and told him it was coming tomorrow. Uh, $18.09. So I, yeah. Well, they've dumped it over to somebody in the Attorney General's office who had called a couple times, and I called him back and talked to him. So once the they decide they can't stand it any longer and they've dumped it over to the Attorney General office, they want an answer. I've had some dealings with the Attorney General office and we could be looking at probably a substantial fine if this goes any further, right? They um, they have the right to sit there and look at it the, from the reporting side. Their, their argument's valid. I mean, it's a, it, it is what it is. We are a class one operating plant, although when I tried to get the licensing the last time, and I think it's in the report that you have, that it's one of those um, inspections that Holton inquired about, you know, going to a class two, which has less reporting, because we're an emergency only plan, and um, they get back to us. Well, they don't have to get back to us. However, we have to follow, and rightfully so, um, the reporting laws and rules in the if you have a fuel meter that's not calibrated within 12 months, if it's 12 months in one day, you will get a letter of warning or a notice of violation. And if you accumulate this, uh, Bob and I met with the director, Mike Linder, about the C&D. And he spent most of the morning, I think, talking about litter in the fence line. And, you know, the number of letters of warning we got, even though we've got three different fence lines, um, it wasn't good enough. Hence, which is one of the reasons at that time, Bob Burrell kind of helped us come on to kind of alleviate that because we had no manpower. So, yes, I mean, DEQ is serious, and they are serious about everything that we have. Lagoon, air, you know, water, and the DHHS is uh, probably more of water than the sewer, so. So we're working on it, but Bruce, they have never gotten back to me, and I take it he's never gotten back to you, this last one? Last I talked to the guy, he was going to call us back for a conference call, and I okay. gave him a reminder on that question with an email last Thursday or Friday, and we have not heard back, so I don't know what he's doing. He, last I talked to him, hadn't even really read the file. Yeah. I mean, I asked him for a couple, couple copies of letters that he thought were the most significant issues, and he answered me and said, I haven't even read them yet, I'm still <laughs> studying the file. So he, I think, was going to go back and talk to them and try to get up to speed, but we need to get probably at this point some kind of a settlement agreement with them with whatever terms we can negotiate they're working on it and we need to get this reporting system up to snuff it is it is there letter to go snuff. back to 2011 or something like that I, if you go back in that warning thing they've been giving us warning since 1994 i mean that's just the way i mean it just, it, it's it's it definitely our issue to take care of but it's kind of like a food inspector uh, that goes to a restaurant. I swear to God, they come and they find whatever they can find that's wrong. I mean, they're very picky and very meticulous, and they look for anything. Well, but some of that is that they don't like to go away saying you're perfect, so they will find something that they... The only know, problem if there was something glaring, they would do the glaring and forget those things. Right. The only problem is, Judy, is that they've added up now, and now they want to slap I got a question actually in regards to when was the last time the generators ran Troy? I'd have to go 
back and look on the paper, I couldn't tell you the exact day. Been a while or no? I think it's been a while. It's been a summer. Uh, at least two months. We talked about it running him again, but I know we hadn't because of the Chevy and the transfer. He's been running the transfer station for the last two months. So. Troy's not the only one that can bring him on line, though, is he? Yeah. Am I safe to say that you're the only one that I would probably, Kurt maybe? I mean, can Kurt bring him on? Never mind. Troy's the only one. Not safely, huh? No, Troy's the only one. City the electrician company. doesn't have a clue on how to run the city electrical generating no. plant? They can. That's a bad you can, sign, but I tell you what, it's no. We need we need to work on that for those guys uh, because if he happens to be on vacation or something, we have a storm moving through. Well. Sure. Emergency Tim is probably what you say, Troy. Tim is probably the next, or Kurt. In ten minutes, I can teach these two girls how to run the gas. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> what if it's a surprise? Yeah, but what about the guys? Then the girls learn. Now remember, Kelly, you have Melissa close the switch, you push the button. Yes, sir. Just make sure the switch is closed. Yeah. No buttons. Well, you just walk over and start the key, right? Was <laughs> <laughs> oh. that thing about the flashback, though, can kill people if they turn that off? Oh, yeah. If they transfer it. Uh huh. Uh, speaking of that, I've been getting a lot of seminar material from OSHA about a huge raft of new clothing and safety gear requirements for electrical generating plants. Really? Are you guys hearing anything about this? I'm not getting the OSHA stuff. Are you trying? No. I actually, I actually signed on to a one-hour video conference and list, or audio conference, listened to it on the telephone. And they're listening part of it. <laughs> Took notes. Uh, but those people are dead serious. And I could not find any exception in the new OSHA rule for size of plant or municipality or jack. I think if you're a plant, you got to do this. And I think you're talking about thousands of dollars of flash proof t shirts and rubber boots and oh my lord, a lot of safety equipment. There, uh, that's one thing, Keith, maybe you can talk about that a little bit, but North Central Public Power was yeah. uh, that they've come up with all the transmission lines and stuff have turned into a real stickler on you know, yeah, and bucket and trucks and all works. That actually is a good segue. I mean, really, I mean, it's an issue. Because yeah. you're talking if the changing of the rules are becoming that paramount, I mean, it's just not the same. It's well, not the same rules. Training for all this OSHA stuff, if it's truly effective on the municipal level, is huge. And that's another, honestly, let's be honest, <coughs> another governing body that they come in, they audit you, no matter how careful you think you are, they will find you. I mean, that's, so you can never be too careful. Like they walked saying, in the door now. Well, in OSHA, we walk in, I don't know, anywhere. I think. Yeah. Well, that's all I've got on legal business. I, if you're going to get community comments, I have a two minute or as a citizen, I'll scoot down to the end of the table on the question of weed letters, but that's a separate question and I'll reserve it and if we're too busy, we'll do it another time. Won't take long. Go ahead with your other agenda. Administrator comments? Well, I'll make this easy. We'll go down the bullets instead of just listening to me talk. First one is an application for the water security grant. I agree completely on any type of conversations individually we've had, this, this should be applied for in front of the council. And uh, I would like to see it. I've been going over through the GPS with the water system for over a year now, JEO, trying to figure out the best way to get our system mapped and up to date as it should be. And this uh, particular grant uh, is an invite list only to come out, and it was uh, dated July 2nd when it came out unable to get it on anything except for this meeting, but it's a first come, first serve. And so I think there was some urgency to, to speed this up. But the bottom line is, is that the, the local and, and other rules, state statutes, prohibit that. So I'm bringing this for you. If you could um, approve it, I would like to go ahead and apply for this and see if we can get the money to start the mapping process for the water. It's 100%. I mean, there might be some costs associated with it, but it's $11,700 uh, lump sum, and that's what we're applying for. Sounds to me like Jay Eagle gets that just to come here. For Absolutely. 
But on the other hand, they're the only ones capable of doing it. So I mean, they get it. So Diego, um, they put on a seminar, I think, about a year ago. And uh, actually, Roger sat back and uh, Joe and I went up to Hardington and went through this. It was used for many different things. But I knew I wanted to start with the infrastructure here first because it's in bad need. And if we ever want to look at it, water's going to be one of our first ones. And you know, eleven thousand dollars to map out for one half of the town, and go do the other half next year for another eleven. Uh, you start digging holes; it don't take long to add up dollars. So it would be money well spent to get it mapped. So that's my plea. So I need a motion if you if you're okay with it. I'll make a motion to approve the application for the water. I'll second it. All right, motion made and seconded to approve that application. Judy, aye. Corey, aye. Grant. Fast. Next thing on this discussion with NCPPB, we won't make it um, uh, too long, but I think uh, there's two letters in there that were given to you, and the last was a response by Keith. Um, significant. We've been waiting for Keith to get back to us, and uh, I like his reply. Basically, they're willing to work with us in just about any way or shape or form or fashion, which could mean uh, rethinking of our electrical system and, and possibly putting some of that into NCPPD's hands, but on the other hand, we can still contain and control ownership too, without having you know this huge uh, just giving everything to to them. Um, Dave, help me out. The you guys probably J E O. Or, guy Dave with glasses. You know the guy that showed you everything there has Peterson. to do. Peterson. <laughs> Boy, I'm talking about a mind. Um, but Dave Peterson replied to me today, too. And I gave him Keith's letter, and his response was great news. So he's really now going to go and take the lead, call Keith as well, and set up where we can maybe all talk together. And Grant, I know you're involved in that, and I'll, we'll have you come in, and I'll probably have Tim and Jay come in as well, too. Because, so the electrical discussion should continue, and I don't think there's a big, huge rush. We're not going to fall apart tomorrow. But I think the urgency is to be looking at this down the road in the next one, two, three years, and something's going to have to. And I think NCPPD is a, is a, could be kind of a good part. They do a lot of different things. Keith called and talked to me one day. Basically, I mean, they've got everything from they'll come in, turnkey, run the system, do all the billing, all the way down to maintenance agreements that they'll come in, do all of our emergency maintenance and upkeep. They've got, they're willing to work with us because, you know, to be honest with you, I think it's 6,000 meters and we're bringing in what, almost 1,000 of them ourselves. So, I mean, this is a pretty large area for what they're looking at. They, I mean, they want, I mean, because it, let's be honest, it's money maker for them. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty substantial. And it could be both ways. Like yeah. I said, it, it's not a matter of, it could be a win win. You have to just basically sculpt the contract as you, um, I think, was we need to see fit. I don't have a problem with them all. They've been, after me, I think for some years now to work out some arrangements and the thing that I had was that I, I thought was nice was they weren't talking about necessarily just coming in and basically buying us out or anything. I mean they do profit sharing, but you can go all the way down to like uh, you can put them on just like a maintenance retainer that should we have a severe storm come through, you know, like he, he actually used it as an example of like pillar. And so if you have a maintenance storm come through and you've got North Central Public Power here, they they're part of a cooperative of all the plumbing or all the, the power companies around in South Dakota and everything. Ice storms, you know, instead of our two bucket trucks running, they're going to bring in ten bucket trucks from all over the place and they'll come in and bring it back up on the grid. So, which is nice. Don't get me wrong; it's not going to be free, but I mean, it has its advantages. So I think it's worth looking at. It could be cost effective, yeah. depending on the amount of cost. You already know what it's going to cost for us to renew our whole system. And that's obviously one of the options. We can still redo our whole system. And they didn't say that was not. And uh, that's why it's kind of like from A to Z. Yeah. That's all I have. You have the two letters. Dave Peterson is going to probably take the lead now on the next set of conversations. And I'll make sure that either I give it to you or we'll keep, you know, keep that dialogue going. How much is, I guess i got to ask the billing side of that. What's JEO billing us to be involved in these communications at this point? Nothing. They will. Obviously, I mean, but that's you know they were looking at a six million dollar investment for us to upgrade. Now they're looking at us maybe offloading some of it. There's not nearly as much revenue to be had, so I think they're going to be a little hesitant of coming in and 
Yeah, I would say that with just about anyone, but you know, Dave seems to be very sincere about uh, wanting to see me, and that's why I was kind of surprised by you know he, his his uh, letter was great. I mean, he thought that was great for his work wherever way to work, and you know, there probably is, and you know, NCPBD does use his JEO on a lot of their projects too. I mean, they they got to have the engineers. The one thing they have is they have engineers in house. I mean, they use their own engineers quite a bit. So, but. Towns, different towns have different needs. So that's all I have on that. Number three, ADA self evaluation evaluation review. You should have in your packet. Uh, basically, I just need to redo it. You take a look. It's from 2009. There's a lot of things that need to be done. But uh, I may bring that back from a, uh, kind of like the personnel manual. It may need some uh, input, such as the budget. You know, I need to for the uh, ADA. Um, the next one here is approval of the soil testing for the library. All of you received in your packet all three bids for the soil tests for the um, up here on that area. Marvin, JEO, the recommendation, my recommendation. Obviously, they're they're really all about the same. Bruce might have something to chime in, but basically, the cheapest one is GSI. They put a good proposal together. I think it's twenty eight hundred dollars. That will come from that library, that extra fund to start, you know, start their work, what we uh, said we were going to do. So um, I don't know if there's, there was no really catches unless you saw something. No, it's a standard <coughs> standard sort of soil test. And this comes out of the money right. based on this fundraiser. Right. Yeah. You know, it's amazing to me that JEO doesn't think they can build a one-story building on a slab without passing off responsibility for how heavy a dirt is under it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. so you'd think you could manage to just write some plans to build a building on a slab without a soil test to put up a water tower? Sure. But to build a one-story building on a slab, they want, to, want us to cover their rear for them so that if the foundation cracks, it's not their fault. Oh well, but that's what they want to do, and, and it's you know it's a business-like way to proceed, I suppose. But good lord, if you don't, JEO will squeak, and they won't want to take responsibility for it. And they have it in their contract. In fact, we don't take responsibility for anything that involves below the surface of the soil. We don't do that. And you didn't see any significant differences? No, in the it's contract? a standard contract. These guys do this all the time. They There's do these soil tests. Sixteen hundred bucks difference in the highest and the lowest, so I didn't know. Yeah, I don't think there's any significant additional problem services there. or something. They all I don't, what I I don't think either one of them is necessary, but if, you know, they all have a cheaper one. <laughs> they all, from what I read, kind of said the same thing. That this is, what, yeah, they this is how much it'll cost, but unless we have to do this, and then it's going to cost more. Yeah. <laughs> so once again, I mean. JEO and then so from my point of view, G GSI was the cheapest at twenty eight hundred dollars. So, so I would need a motion on that. I'll make a motion to approve GSI's uh, lump sum of twenty eight hundred dollars. Second. All right. Motion made and second to approve the GSI bid. Judy. Aye. Corey. Aye. Grant. Aye. Hiring a part-time clerk. Um, we had forgotten, Judy and I apologize. You said put it on next month. This was one that kind of got late here. And, but I, we talked about it on Friday, I believe, and you see it was added, discussion action on a part-time clerk. Um, more of thoughts I mean, in, in your process and kind of what's in your mind. We know that we're still working, but you said bring it back and maybe talk to the girls. I, 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 I think they've been doing a wonderful job. I, I can see, you know, the possibility of a part-time clerk helping as needed. I, it's, it's certainly, there are times that right now it's very hectic, but it seems like the two of them handle it very, very well uh, during the majority of it, which is, I think, what you wanted to hear or wanted to see anyway. And I can, I'll let, you know, if you want to, I'll let them speak to it and kind of get their thoughts. It's definitely really hard to do for first probably three weeks in the month because there's so much that I do that requires my full attention, which leaves everything to Melissa, which she does a great job of doing, but it's just, I mean, with all the phone calls and 
everything, all the people walked in came bells and everything. It's just that having that extra third person, just even just answer phones for the public is huge because she's trying to do billing. She's trying to do transfer stuff. She's trying to do all the deposits. And I'm doing all the payroll and all the claims and all the bills and so forth. And it's just it's that we really miss just that one person to handle just the miscellaneous duties. Um, that's, they, they, you know, in a part-time basis, especially towards the beginning of the month. What's the one you guys If you had somebody to work 20 hours a week, what hours would you want them to work? Oh, I guess. Or, and most maybe, of the maybe time, it wouldn't be the same on each week, maybe well, at a certain time. Well, most of the, of the time month. in the office, the busiest is, um, for me at least, is like the beginning of the month because I got to do a lot of the, you, like the transfer station billing, but then from like the 16th on, like a week after that is when I'm doing meter readings and printing bills and making sure that they're okay and stuff. So it's just like a couple of weeks out of the month where it's really chaotic in the front part of the office. And same with Kelly with the payroll at the beginning, like the 15th and the end of the month stuff and doing end of the month. It'd be more like a six hour a day thing, kind of helping to cover with like the noon to like a nine to three is something that I think I would be thinking, and I don't know what she's thinking about, but I don't know how we're going to quantify that to where you say, well, we need three months out of, you know, three weeks out of the month from nine to three type of thing. So I don't know how we want to structure, you know, that type of help is what I guess where we're going to. I mean, to try to find somebody to work set hours. I guess we have to come up with something, you know, that's. Maybe surprised that. <laughs> That people are willing to yeah. work like that. I mean, that's, you know, Amy works for Brooke, and she does a lot of little odd hours and stuff. And she loves it for the fact that they put the kids, you know. So I think there's that that age group for some of the moms and stuff. That right. And I, but I definitely think because it can get pretty busy at lunch. Well, because if she goes to lunch during night or twelve thirty, a lot of times we'll get a rush of people. Right. At that Everybody's time. on their lunch hour. Exactly. So something like that would be also beneficial for us as well. So, um, but for the most part, we've been doing pretty good. I mean. What time do you go to lunch? <laughs> we have to tell him to go to lunch. What, because he's still on his desk? <laughs> yeah, so no, meaning. that's about enough. I mean. <laughs> uh, they do. I, mean, I, should, I, I try to get out of there if I can. I cover the, at least what little I can, so there's two people in the office. But I've been trying to get out of there by 1.30, 2 o'clock. You know? That's why you answered the phone the other day. Then. I called down there and you answered the phone. He does really good. I didn't know yeah. who it was. I thought I had the wrong spot. You just... You, you just I got, I got my support. Here. You'd be surprised who we put to work at any point in time. If Kurt's up there and the cash <laughs> registered, then he gets to the customers for all the disease. It is, uh, yeah, in, in all fairness, I, let me say this. Whatever you guys decide to do, is, I will tell you that they, as far as what I'm used to, and uh, even with the load, it has been, you know, it, it's, it's right now, it's an incredible load time. There's a lot of things going on. And I'm trying to balance between the grants, between the, the paving, between the conversations with just about every every single department is needing attention right now, in, in good and bad. I mean, so it's, um, and hopefully they are training and learning well because I haven't been able to spend a whole lot of time with them. And we're coming up on budget. And I'm, How's that been going? Your, you know, your, tr your learning curve since Lori's gone there? Um, well, I've I've only had 11 hours so far of instructor, so I've been doing a lot on my own, which has been okay. I haven't, been, I haven't messed anything up yet, so it's early. But, you know, she came in and helped me quite a bit with payroll yet uh, Monday because it was a large payroll week, three weeks, sure. and so forth. And she, you know, the payrolls, the month end, those are the types, and, and you know, the quarter ends, the types are really to help. Um, the rest of it, we've been able to get by with phone calls and stuff like that, so. It's a good big side desk group that wants a big, um, the stuff like, um, you know, what needs to go on the agenda, some of those things, I'm not really sure. Sometimes Bruce will let me But I tried to help that out. I called her up, and, well, I had Heather call her up and say, take these two things off the agenda. You can't call them this, you gotta call them that. And then 30 minutes later, I decided that was wrong. So about the time she was getting that done, I called her back and said, put that other one back on the agenda. We can't call it that, we gotta call it this. Bruce, see, I think I'm That was you. just a test to see if you yes, could he's been not very swear at me over the phone. No, no, I lean on you, so I, that's fine. I took, he called me back again, I said, okay, I've just made, Another eight copies of the agenda. Long to tell me I need to change. Don't you? <laughs> and I, 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 got, I got to tell you, Bruce. The next time you call back in thirty minutes like that and said that was wrong, I, 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 I had a heart attack in front of her office. I said, Bruce just called you back and told you that was wrong because I figured it had to be a resolution. <laughs> but there, and I, 
You did. You split the difference. The other one needed an ordinance. That's why we split it. Yeah. Do we want to ask for somebody? I. I can't imagine a budget coming up that you don't need the extra help as soon as you can get it. Yeah, yeah. we do. There's all kinds of money for the budgets that we do. <laughs> I'm more, more concerned with, you know, making it flexible. So if you do hire someone, kind of limit how many hours it is, and then let them know you'll try it at this and these hours, but they may change to different hours. I agree. I think that's. You don't want to hire somebody for this and this and this, and then that's not when you really need them. And I don't think yeah. you're probably at that point yet. You know exactly. Well, when you from want. the standpoint of you know a crush of work coming in and trying to get something out, just being protected four hours a day, even if you just said morning or you just said ten to two, or you know make it consistent so right. somebody can make their schedule. Right. If you could just say, all right, now I have four hours not interrupted. I can do this. That's a godsend. That is. I mean, I, it wouldn't necessarily have to be six or eight hours every certain day, but just have a block of time that they can't get to you. Right. If you can find that, it's hard to find. Mm -hmm. But it's easier to hire people. At my point, if you make a consistent package. And always, like she said, we'd be able to have them be flexible. Say, yeah, maybe flexible you just stay six hours today. Flexible is lovely. You find it. Yeah. It's hard to yeah. find. <laughs> Yeah, as long as you're not consistently going to 40, I mean, our manual, I mean, you can just say if they had to stay a couple of extra hours, I suppose I, I can look at the budget flexible too and you know, make sure that that's got a little bit of uh, flex time, or not flex time, but flexible time. So plan for four and have it budgeted for five or six and make sure that you know, you're going to use it. I got to ask, I guess, on a, on a part time person, how big of an issue is it for like CPNI? Billing, privacy, and stuff like that. I mean, what do you guys? What's the city do for? I mean, I'm sure when you started, you probably had to sign like a non-disclosure agreement or something, or not. I mean, that's that's getting to be a big deal even for like yeah. us, CPNI. That you. What are you talking? I'm well, basically, what, what it is is uh, how do I explain it? Um, anytime a customer, it's Privacy Act. Basically, when a customer comes in, you need to if you don't specifically know them, you're supposed to verify. But there's also it's getting to be more and more of an issue with billing that if you hire a part-time person, you know, they're they're leaving with customer information, customer records, that kind of thing. And it's not such a big deal with a full-time employee, but when you start having a part-time employee come and go and pen on, it's, it's a legal thing. I mean, it never used to be a problem, and honestly, it's probably not a problem anyway, but they've really started cracking down on us and the bank <coughs> on the same thing. They be the the it'd be regular the regulatory I would guess probably at state level is most of what ours is. Um, trying to think who have you be. have you sent out Privacy Act stuff? I don't know that I've seen mm -hmm. it from the city. And the bank puts out Privacy Act stuff. We have uh, posters, Privacy Act posters. I believe we have a couple. Yeah, we have one out the ones that hang in the break room type of stuff. Yes. Just the standard Privacy Act. You know what I'm talking about. The stuff to customers is the yeah, separate no. question. That's, you know, I think you're supposed to send out a letter once a year stating what your privacy act policy is. That's, I didn't know if that was an issue when you start hiring part-time people as opposed to full-time or not. Especially when they're going to be doing either. the billing and that kind of thing. It yeah. hasn't been, but now you put a bug in my brain and now I'm probably thinking well, about yeah, it. I mean, it's, it's, it's true. I mean, it's, I, I am very sensitive. The privacy act for things is, is very, very sensitive. Uh, such as public information, and that's where you know Brooke and I. We, there's both. I mean, we have to have so much accessible, and so much not. So we haven't had a problem in all well, of our time. That's one of those things to think about. So um, direction, do you want to? You think you could hold out for one more month? I would like. To, <coughs> I'd like to get you. Uh, I don't want this on, but I'd like to get you weaned off Lori a little bit more, so you could start seeing how your schedule is going to work, and where. Like they were talking is what hours of the day as you start to develop your basically your pattern on where you're going to be when you would like to have them there. I mean, we know over the lunch hour clearly. Yeah, and I think I pretty much have an idea of what my schedule is like. Yeah. I know where my busy times are, okay. and I, I really am worried you know, on weaning myself off you know, okay. with, that, with that whole thing. But I definitely know, especially with her schedule too, that it's just the customer contact that first two weeks and all the phone calls is just amazing, yeah. and it's really hard to get. And I 
that's a really crucial time for us as well. So. The biggest problem I see, honestly, isn't so much that. It's the fact that, honestly, with only two of you up there, you can't be gone during the day, and she can't be gone that in the summertime. Somebody wants to take a day off that's or something like that, you can't. That's, yeah, that's another big issue. You can just do what I do. Just Leave. close the doors? Put a sign on a chair that says, I'm out for 30 minutes, sit down, shut up, and write your note on this piece of paper. <laughs> Come back the next day. I didn't see that. Well, I right. saw the note. <laughs> 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 so it depends on how long I'm going to be gone. I'm personally your building the guy. It's a small town. You don't have to lock shit You're up. building the guy the whole time he sits there. <laughs> video, Which picks, video picks him up. The clock starts. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have any problems if I start advertising? <coughs> your, your, your personnel committee get in and go visit a couple times and help with this advertising and do it that so. way? Yeah, we have a committee set up. Who is it? You and Judy? Uh, Joe and Judy. Or was it Jason and Judy? No, it was Joe. If, if, you, don't want to, on your if you don't want to spend... The, the personnel spot. manual was, was uh, Jason and mine. Personnel oh, manual was separate. Well, you sat in on the interviews. What? Didn't you sit in on the interviews? Judy yeah, and I she did. Judy and Bob. Oh, okay. Maybe that but there's a personnel committee, is there not? Or do we never know? Huh. I mean, every year you used to have there's yeah. committees for every little topic, and there's an official committee. <coughs> it's not an advisory committee. Anyway, my point being, you could take a motion tonight to authorize X committee to work with Mike and get up an ad. You'd still have to accept it at the next <coughs> meeting, perhaps. But if you don't look out and you wait till next month to start advertising, yeah, it's, it's going to be Thanksgiving before exactly. you get something done. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'd make a motion of that. If you <laughs> two would be willing to. Who else? I don't know. Bob worked on it last time, I guess. If you would be willing to do that again, Bob? Yeah, I can do that. Go through okay. the mic and work on it. Yeah. I'd make a motion of that. I'll second it. All right, motion made and seconded. Judy? Aye. Corey? Aye. Grant? Aye. All right. Okay, the uh, next item on here, um, Lori actually straightened me out once again, but uh, she brought to my attention changing council meetings is not something that you want to do without discussion action. Um, you don't have to, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you what my thoughts are. August regular council meeting falls on the 12th. I will be in Norway at that time. Does not mean you can't have the meeting, but what I would suggest, because of the budget and the budget <coughs> is crucial, that either you lighten the load on August 12th as much as you can and go through the claims that you do the regular business, because uh, otherwise you have to wait till the 19th. And that gets a little long for claims. So uh, there's a couple different options you can do. You can try moving it out if you wish. And that would be fine with me, the first week of August. That tends to be a little quick for claims. We don't always get them in. And, you know, that second Tuesday is, is optimal. It really is. In most months, it's perfect. How long are you going? I'm just going Monday, <coughs> Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'll be back on Friday. August 11th through 14th. Yeah. If you do decide to continue that, then I would ask you to maybe look at your calendar. The one thing we're going to want to do is, so, and I know how this goes, because nobody likes to be at the budget workshops. Regardless, we probably need at least two, if not three. Two is, is the minimum, and I think we try to do two each year. Third one sometimes comes necessary if there's some um, issues or things that just aren't coming together as well as they should. So. Um, you can, so you got two choices, and I'll, I'll kind of let you guys figure out what, you know, what you think. Do we have a special meeting earlier, mm -hmm. and then for the budget, and then have the red, and try to take care of as much as we can? Yes. That we don't want to do at the, at the regular meeting, and then try to make that regular meeting really short, and just do claims, and and then have another budget meeting later. Yeah, I, you know, if you want to, you can go so far as to make the 12th a, a meeting of, items always get added to an agenda, but if you want to limit the agenda, and you can tell it with the clerk, direction, and know, you know, the, this is a meeting for just claims and that, you certainly can, otherwise you might find it start to drift 
with more and more and more items. Uh, yeah, that would work for me. And then I'm still going to probably would like to see a meeting at the end of August. September comes and our, our budgets are due like the 20th, you know, in that range. I haven't gotten the exact. But we really can't start and do the workshops until August, which because I'm going to say, well, why do we wait till then? But, but I don't get valuations from the county. Everything comes together quick and fast. I just got the highway allocation today, yesterday, today. So I mean, right now is when the time the budgets start coming in and I start getting the figures that actually make sense. So, um, so at least if you're going to do that, and then you're looking at maybe three meetings in the month of August. And the first week is shot because that's Sturgis and everybody will be gone. <laughs> The first one, if you, if you do have to be missing anyone, you know, it would have to be a special <coughs> workshop and it would be preliminary. It would be just a lot of the worksheets you'd get to start filling out. I've got all your vehicle, all those things, those, those sheets that we worked on, I've got those and I'm starting to work on what we need and more of a needs list. It'll be the same way with the staff, kind of go over the staff and see what the needs are and bring back. Would you be them. ready to do that on the 5th? Of August, yes. Yeah. That's the first Tuesday? Does that work for, does that work? Not a problem with me. Is that a workshop? Yeah. And that particular one, like say, Bruce, you were up in Sturgis, I can always email you. It's just the budget stuff. So. Whatever. We can Skype. I'm actually, I won't have gone on the floors for whatever it's worth, but I, this budget meeting I wouldn't normally attend anyway. I, I, I know. But your special meetings, you can set them, you know, if you're going to change your regular meeting, you've got to get on the book here with a motion. I, I think we could just meeting. have the regular meeting on the 12th as we normally do. That's fine. And just say that, Keep it clean. Uh, you know, set a limited agenda and say anything else that comes up that isn't emergency, that we will put it on our special meeting that we're going to have afterwards. So if we have something we have to take care of, we'll you get back. Yeah, I, I'm just going to carry it over till then. Yeah. The last one in August will probably be the heavy workshop, then the one that everyone hates, and I'll try to bring cookies and food and everything else because we're going to be here for <coughs> four or five hours. So it's not Everybody loves budget meetings. I don't know if you want to make that kind of as a motion. Uh, I don't know. According to Bruce is right, though. You really don't need to do anything if, unless you want to make a special meeting right now. Just determine the date you can. But otherwise, we can. I can send it out and do that and post it. Uh, if you're going to keep the regular meeting the same. Do you understand that? I think we should, just for invoices that were. Well, we can yeah. change the regular meeting. I mean, there's a special meeting you can set on a short notice, but if you're sure, we'll do it. Yeah, okay. And, uh, make a record. Okay. Whatever. The special meeting later in the month, do we have a date you want to? You just throw out a date then. Okay. If we can try to, try to set something up so we can get you posted. So regular meeting is still the 12th. Yeah, we have two more Tuesdays. Um, 19th, 26th. Does Joe have, I know we've tried to change meetings and he's Tuesday nights. You're, um, yes, this is good. You, yeah. you don't have a uh, Pierce County thing on Tuesday nights or. Maybe. I mean, if that, this would take precedence over that. And you'd have to it might be reason to hold off on your special meeting and try and talk with Joe. He'll squeak pretty hard if you miss him on the regular meeting. Yeah, I know we should have the fifth. If you want to put the fifth in stone and leave it. Okay, all right. And we'll, we'll we'll at the fifth, meeting. we can try to post that up the other one. Okay. What time?
that special meeting, you're not going to set it for now, you'll set it later. You're probably getting tired. Skip kind of right. <laughs> Here's my problem. I got this weed letter from the city, and I have some weeds behind my storage building, and they're over 12 inches tall. And I don't object to getting a weed letter, but I object to being targeted over and above most of the community. On this map are yellow marks where all the city weed letters went. And a green mark where I am, and the red marks circled with ink are the people that didn't get weed letters. Look at the map and kind of get a picture in your mind, and then I'll hand these pictures down for you. The yellow you're marks, you're are, the the green. The yellow marks are the city weed letters that went out. The green is my storage building sitting over here behind the office. And the red circles are where I'm going to show you these pictures. These are the pictures of my storage building as they existed a week after I got my weed letter. This has not been mowed. I had mowed it once already. And this is what it looked like a week after I got the weed letter. And there's some weeds there. Sure, there are. And I don't object to getting the weed letter, but I object they're having a sharp stick poked in my eye every summer. That's the map. Now this is other downtown properties. This is some of the stuff right here downtown that were circled in red. No weed letter on any of these properties. You may recognize some of them. No weed letter. No weed letter. No weed letter. I also went around town looking. These are all the downtown properties. Yeah, and the downtown properties. And my storage building is mowed, except back by the alley, where there where there are some weeds that need attention. It's been windy. It's been busy. I've been gone a lot. Three fourths of the weeds behind my storage building are on the neighbor's property. The neighbor also didn't get a weed letter. The neighbor hires somebody to mow his grass, but the guy won't mow the bad spot. He leaves that for me. This is the block out along the highway. <clears throat> Mr. Ashoff's block. He actually wasn't here long enough to participate. Well, is it still Ashoff's? The trailer park block? Yeah. This is the block out along the highway, right on Highway 20 in Plainview. I mean, you have to go looking to get behind my storage building and see a weed. I mowed out in front. That's along the highway. The rest of these, these are just some other selected spots around town, including a half a dozen of the city properties, just because. But I wouldn't expect the city properties to get weed left. That's forest. That's, that's, that's like a yeah. gated... Park. Yeah. Park. I've expressed yeah. to Mr. Groff he needs to mow his weeds a couple of times. Uh, that's just, that's uh, not my building anymore. Oh, west of Danny's house a couple blocks. Nurse took it. Yeah. 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 Ye
that puts out these weed letters and either get them fair-minded and well done or quit. There are two or three of those that I didn't have a street address on because they're up in the gravel district uh, by Dennis Rossberg. Yep. <laughs> you know, I would I would get my weeds mowed if I didn't take so much time scooping the city snow off the park and cleaning up the park with my heavy equipment early in the spring. But I didn't have time to mow because I was busy doing those things. This is a no action item, unless you're willing to suggest to Mike that perhaps you can review the process and either be fair about this or not. There are six or eight properties in downtown Plainview, right on Main Street, that are worse than mine, and I got the only weed letter. I find that to be a mess. We probably do need to do something about, I don't know what you want to do about this uh, pinnacle building up here. Uh, you tell the former owner about it, he just squawks and says it's um, not his, you know, if you want, I mean, we can charge it back to the IRS or whatever, and, that, and the city they, can go in and do it. Are they doing anything with it? Is it for sale? Out the real owner and send it in? Still won't get it, it's still won't get it done. And as far as the, uh, the process, well, code is pretty clear. You guys probably should, this goes long before we you know, <laughs> Somewhere along the way, between the time, Bruce has a better history than I do, but somewhere along between the time of no administrator to some administrator to partial administrator to whatever, someone gave the authority to the police. The code says city administrator. Or duly authorized. And there's no reason that one of the kids mowing the park couldn't drive around town with a camera and bring you 20 pictures, and then you could send out the weed well, loader. Well, but let's be honest. If we're talking about something that's not going to be enforced, just like the 30-some cars I got. I know. I mean, how many tickets a week? But I, I know where you're going. But my point, back to that again. Oh, yes, you're being picked up. Clearly, you can see it. You had tall weeds, but so That's my else. only objection. But it's being, it's being targeted, so my objection, and I believe it. I know who that is. But I asked the city who authorized this and who wrote it down, and I didn't get an answer. So I'm not making any personal attacks. It may be the police, it may be somebody else, it may be God, I don't know who. Well, but I think I rest assured, regardless, and I don't sit there and stick anyone. There's only two people that have the authority to send out a weed letter. Two people. And I did not send yours out. And we'll leave that alone at that. I mean, when I send out a weed letter, Basically, I go ahead. Here's how I say that. <laughs> Melissa, <laughs> I got a lot of shoulders. So I'm sorry, Bruce. When I send out a weed letter, as I told Bruce, and, and yes, there's going to have to be some more thought process, the consistency of it. But when I send out a weed letter, usually what I have is someone that calls in a neighborly complaint. And I'll go up with a car and look at it. And a couple of these were clearly beyond the 12 inches. So and, that's, to, and that's what they're know. for. They're right. for lawns that have gotten out of control. The, the 12 weeds behind Subway, they're just as bad as my 12 weeds. But who cares? But let's get to walk. back to my original point of, that would be fine if you didn't mow them. I expect you to be sent a, a bill or mowed. And I would expect everybody else to be. Sure. But, that's where it falls a little short. But where there's six or eight I know. as bad or worse all around me, and I get a weed letter right in the middle of the pile, that's crap. I was going to have four letters this year. I didn't get one. Yeah, you, uh, you're not over I keep mine in the binder. <laughs> I hired the bonnet kid already, so mine's taken care of. Oh, shoot, because uh, I was going to uh, say, uh, I went uh, back uh, there uh, too. Well, I can't hire anybody to mow mine because it's steep. Can we ask? clay and it's, it's mud four foot tall and it's four foot of drop and oh. you can't run a riding mower on it so you can't hire anybody to mow that i have to drag something up and down the little slope that's why the guy that owns the house next to me 
pays somebody to mow that lawn to his credit. But the guy that mows the lawn doesn't mow all those weeds. He leaves them for me to mow because it's so damned hard. And when I mow, I mow them. But I'm only going to mow when I choose to mow. Unless the city wants to go mow them and send me a bill, but then they damn well better mow all those other people. Can we ask that you tell Bruce that before he sends a letter, it goes through you? I'll take care of that tomorrow. And can you also let him know what this discussion was about and let him know that we want equal enforcement? And that's the problem with not enforcing our ordinances? There's two things that I answer to that. Yes. And the other one's, do I have to? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's well, not much of an action item, and it's a damn shame it has to come here, but it's also a damn shame the way the system works that it happens that way. Well, it's always been a stick with me. I mean, it's no different than the vacant house and how one of them can be picked out. Because I sit here we'll month after month and say, for God's sakes, enforce the law. Yeah. When I have a 14 inch weed, I get a weed. Loss of 12 inches. I know. It's terrible. So ashamed. But I'm going to save up my time and not scoop the walk in the park and not work in the park and not clean out the picnic shelters so next summer I'll have time to mow. I got a couple. Mine are kind of easy. They don't require any discussion necessarily. Not on the mowing side, but God bless him. Uh, Dwayne Dean is gradually turning his lot out there into a junkyard. Three pickups now that don't run and don't move, and a tractor, and a tra and a huge shed. Where is this? On his property out here at East End. On the corner. On the south end of East End. I drive by it every day, and every day it gets a little worse. He sends somebody out to mow it. That's fine. I mean, it's great. And he did a little work on the house. Nobody lives there, but fine. But he now has like two or three cars parked there, trucks parked there, and his scrummy old tractor. And uh, there was a fridge laying outside for about eight months. And... Just a bunch of junk. Uh, he's just gradually doing what he did out in the country and just turned it into a junkyard. And right at the entrance to town, that looks kind of bad. The, the painting guy at least moved his all behind the Quonset now, so you can't really see. It's all the same crap. It's all still sitting there, but uh, at least it's behind the Quonset and he put up a fence or something. Um, I was I, just in one of those development things. I happened to be at the city of Wakefield meeting the other day for some other business. And the city paid $160,000 to renovate and make some lots available for housing, which they have now sold all of at $15,000 and turned a profit. And so uh, something to consider, if possible. Sometimes when you lay out the money, it doesn't all have to be just down the drain. It can be returned in profit somehow. And then they reinvested all that money in doing some electrical work. And they did all the utilities up to the lots. That's why it costs so much. But I think they had, I don't know, 18 lots or something that they sold in Wakefield has all brand new houses all the way around their whole town so just something to think about uh, I had to run out at the housing hearing portion uh, for an emergency but I mentioned to Mike uh, there were some the only way well not the only way the second to only way that got actually noticed to people was I believe Lee must have hung up her own notices in Casey's and the grocery store, and I think there was one at the post office perhaps, the city might have gotten one. Roadrunner. Okay, those are not the written down legal posting places for official meetings of the city. The notice was unsigned. Uh, it was obviously done on behalf of the city, which I don't know that you should be comfortable allowing to have happen. And if I would have been here for the hearing, I would have asked that it be canceled because I think it was totally illegal. And the reason I say that is because the last time when we applied for this grant, I said the same thing and Lee screamed at me in my office for half an hour about how she didn't know the rules and it's not fair and we need to apply for this now and it'll never, ever, ever happen again. And then it happened again. The three legal posting places that the city has to determine every single year and put the things up every year are the post office, the news office, and the city office. If you want to change those, do that. But I would suggest that random people not be able to publish notices for the city. When I called Mike, Mike said, good God, put it in the paper, take care of it, it's fine. That also runs into, was that enough time? 
I don't know what the time limit is on CDBG grants. I believe it to be 10 days, but we talked about that a month ago too. I would not recommend that anymore, and I don't really feel bad about missing the having Lee yell at me discussion again. But I don't think this public hearing was right, and I don't think it was done in the right way, and I don't think it should happen. I, it's just the way it is. I, they were posted in the wrong places. The city had next to no knowledge about them being posted on their behalf, and it wasn't signed, and it wasn't anything. And I, I disagree with the way that happened. Um, I got, I don't know if you I have some library people here. Uh, this is not more of a complaint, but just kind of a wondering thing, sort of. Under new business in the library's minutes this time, and I was watching this a little bit because I just like to watch this. Uh, they said, Kelly said they were going to make a script for their presenters, which is great. And then they're going to do some work at the barbecue, which I guess they can. Nobody really asked, but whatever. Uh, with a literacy campaign with bottled water and bookmarks handed out at the barbecue. The only reason I bring it up is because Mike teased me the other day about putting the photocopies for the petition on the city's ticket. Because of when the sales tax went, got ran through, yeah, I brought up the, the, uh, the government agency that does the taxing promoting the passage of a sales tax, blah, blah. So he joked with me about that, and that's long gone and over and done, and it's no big deal. But a literacy campaign, I mean, you, you have to be very careful with that. And I have told myself I would never make a bigger deal of it than bring it to these meetings, but I'd really like to see everybody make sure they're really, really, really careful. Handing out water and bookmarks, most of the, most, almost, all the stuff, and I, I'm shooting myself in the foot because I helped the library out with some of their printing, and I'm all for the library, it's great. But you really want to be careful, but it's because if somebody doesn't like this, this is what they go after. They go after the public notices stuff, they go after the rules and regulations being followed stuff, and if you show that you have spent money to help this get passed, you're going to have a problem with a lot of people. And so I don't know. I mean, it says fundraising committee and board members. It doesn't actually even say foundation in this case. Foundation had done it in the past. They printed up a bunch of things, and they came to the uh, alumni thing, which is great. They, they asked. It was great. And they're doing everything they can, and I understand that. But you really want to be careful with this. And I'm not going to say bottled water is lobbying people to pass the bond or any of that kind of stuff. But I've mentioned it a couple of times, and it continues to progress. And I don't know what the bookmarks are going to say. It's none of my business. I don't care. But you, you cannot, the, the taxing agency cannot spend money promoting the passage. I mean, if, even if they walk around in the park and try to convince people that it's a good idea, it counts. I, I, I don't think you want to get into that stuff. So I'm, I'm not thinking they're purposefully doing anything wrong on purpose because they want to do it so badly, but a lot of times around here and in other towns too, I see a lot of times people just they don't pay attention. They don't know the rules.